Well, a very good morning and welcome to day two of the Prague European Open. I'm joined by my co-commentator for this competition, Jan Martel. Jan, Hello. morning, how are you? I'm very fine today. I'm excited from yesterday, from the fights, and I'm looking forward for the heavyweights today. Who have we got in the heavyweights then that um, you would like us to look at particularly? <laughs> I'm looking forward <laughs> for Lukas Kirpalek, our famous judoka for the Czech Republic. And there's a little bit of surprise of him because he usually starts in the weight category under 100. Right, so a heavyweight, but this time he's super heavyweight. He's gone yes. up with the, with, the, with the big guys. Yes. What, what do you think about that? Uh, I think that uh, he didn't want to lose the weight yeah. and because he's in his home city, let's yeah, say. Yeah. He tries the heavyweight, for instance. Why not? Let's see wha what, what will this bring. I think that the heavy, heavy guys are a little bit surprised and that... He, he could win it. He could win it. <laughs> 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 he, he could win it. I, well, I'm not, not going to comment on, 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 on what would happen if Lukas Kupalik won the super heavyweight here in Prague. We'll have to see how that, how that unfolds uh, during, during the day. Now, Jan mentioned uh, the super heavyweight. That's one of the categories uh, going on today. We've got four weight categories uh, to, to, to bring you. Under 81, under 90, under 100, and plus, one, uh, well, and, and plus 100. And um, we will... <laughs> Morning, Chief. <laughs> it's okay when, yeah. the, when the Chief walks through. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's no problem. Anybody else, we kick out, but not the Chief. <laughs> Right, okay, back to, back to the business, the four, four weight categories that we've got to bring you. Um, we're going to concentrate on the under 81 kilo category, and that's going to be on mat number three. Mat number one and two will split between the, uh, on, on mat number one, it will be the 90 kilos pool A and B, and the plus 100 kilo category. And on mat number two, it will be the 90 kilo category, pool C and D, and the under 100 kilo category. Okay, so that's what we'll look at. Now, we made a little movie of Prague. I don't know if we can show it. Let's have a look at that little clip. A nice little um, clip we prepared for you with a few images from the European Championships as well as the nice images of Prague. Well, we're, we're ready to get underway with the first contest. We're watching the men's under 81 kilo category. It's down on mat number three. It's Giovanni Carolo of Italy, and he faces... Shana Yeji from Czech Republic. There you go, okay, <laughs> <laughs> from the Czech Republic. Peter Crumpton is the referee in the middle and I'm going to leave you with Jan Bartel for a moment while I go and speak to the chief. <laughs> <laughs> and preparation for the contest, but he is prepared for today's year, and let's see what, what he can do. Uh, 
right now under the pressure of the left left arm of his Italian opponent. One minute pass and he can and I hope he will show us some of his splendid techniques. Especially the uh, some problem. Some problem with the grip. Energy is under pressure. The, the grip of the Italian opponent is not good for him. He isn't able to avoid the le strong left hand, which makes his which makes him problems. Now a little bit of a Nelza work. But unfortunately, not towards the camera, so we haven't seen anything from the Nevaz action. The Italians competed very well yesterday in the lightweights. We have seen Elio Verde winning the under 66. And there was one third place and two fifth places for the Italian team yesterday. Uh, let's see if they they can repeat this result. But he started well, scoring Yuko by Kosot Kosotogake. And Jirka has to be much more careful in the kumikata. Nice, nice, nice technique for the score, <laughs> nice though, wasn't it? Nice technique for the really score, but, good. but the left hand makes him problems from the Italian. He's tall, isn't he? Look how tall he is. He reminds me a little bit of Antoine valois Fortier, the Canadian. He's just in the, in the height. They're tall for 81 kilos. Trying to get rid of that left hand. And then he goes and back. He, he <laughs> couldn't get the leg though. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wanted to go back for the same technique, but he couldn't couldn't get the leg going. Carrara <laughs> <laughs> picks up <laughs> a, <laughs> a penalty for passivity when he's the one who should be going in the coach. That that, that was better. He comes back now with the Yuko. So. That tidies things up for him. So two Yukos on the scoreboard. One minute and 30 seconds left. And I think that Irka won't be satisfied with this result. And I hope that he will be able to throw and show another technique. Yeah, well, he's, he's got some time. Yes, yes, yes. He caught the Italian once with it. He may yet be able to come back and throw him again. We'll see. He just wandered out there. He'll get penalised. So come on, last minute. Put it through. Yeah, he hasn't got the kind of condition 
mm. that you need at, at this level, mm. to, to, to be honest. Mm. He doesn't have heart. You know. I mean, Carollo is, is not you know, the trailblazer, high-flying competitor, and he's struggling against him. Oh. After three, after three and a half minutes, he was he was pr pretty much done. And this is the difference in these levels that we were talking about. We were talking about the three levels, and with the greatest of of respect to Shana. Yes, you're, you're right. He's level three, isn't he? I like him though, <laughs> but, but he's he's level three. Uh, he, he's trying to return to the European scene. Uh, yeah. Okay. He trained very hard last year, but he has three or four years uh, when he was out from the judo completely. Very out. hard then, and extremely very hard, then. hard yeah. Uh, he got really good results in the Czech judo, but uh, not... Not a nice effort. Not enough for the European yet. Just losing out there on a couple of errors that he picked up. Well, that was the opening contest in the under 81 kilo category. Jan is going to fill out the uh, contest sheets as he did yesterday. He did a terrific job. I haven't written a single name in all weekend. That's bliss. You <laughs> <laughs> have to fill out all the names and do them myself. But Jan has taken over that. Well, terrific job. Right, who have we got coming up next then? I'll, li I'll leave the calling. See, that was such a nice technique. He really got hold of Carollo there. And then he got caught. Who have we got next then? Oh, we will see Ryu Giam of France fighting against Jesenko Cetic of Slovenia. All right, those are the two. Gilam Ryu races to the mat. That's his th the way that he likes to to do it. Now comes to grips with Chetik. So uh, Ryu picks up the penalty for being a bit loose with the area and almost it's a little bit like Yoko Otoshi sitting down and just trying to wheel your opponent over but uh, not enough for wheel power. Not <laughs> enough, yeah, yeah. Well you, tr you I, I suppose you try and you, you try and drop him uh, down. But there is that motion in there that was missing. Oh that's nice. Oh. Just mm -hmm. just fails to get him up onto the hip. Ryu just managed to sit up and avoid getting caught. There's a replay in there. You see that? Our uh, replay operator's on the ball this morning. I don't know whether that came from the camera or whether that came from our technician. Oh, it's the technician. So <laughs> yeah. See, I'm not surprised with that because he's that kind of intelligent, bright, sharp, witty kind of guy, you know, he, he can do those things. <laughs> Would have been surprised if it come from one of the camera operators. Which he might have left-sided from the Slovenian, but and again the he steps the off the out. 
just showing off now. He's replaying again. Look, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not even a good one, but he's <laughs> just showing that he can replay. <laughs> that wasn't yours. Oh, it was yours. <laughs> okay. Right, he's, he's not going to do any more now. Look, we've up, we've upset him. Another penalty for being a loo bit loose with the area. Three penalties for Ryu, and he doesn't look that bad a fighter. No, but he, he always steps out from yeah. the mat. Well, to get three penalties in two minutes, well, right from the beginning. I was speaking to one of the coaches, and he said, this is the time when you're going to get Ippons. He said, when it's three Shidos on the board, you're going to get an Ippon. Because either the Frenchman, in, in with the realization that he's got to do something, is going to come up with a score, or... The Slovenian, because the Frenchman is so open now, having to score, he's going to throw him. So this is, this is you know, the, the, the rules have almost engineered the situation where you're going to get big scores. Let's see if that, that that's just a theory and it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but let's see if I'm going to subscribe to that theory in case that uh, an Ippon comes up now. Beginning to, he's beginning to look for it now, Rio. He, he's, he knows that he's, he's up against it. Yes, but it seems to me that he's started to fight after two minutes or, yeah, yeah. or, or so. After the three Shidos, oh, you mean? Three <laughs> oh. Failed attack from Cetic, and it was so poor, he's picked up a false attack penalty. Here comes the Frenchman again. Oh, not quite. Uh, I'll tell you what, this, this Kouchi and uh, is, is proving really popular. Have we got, is, is Kapalik already on the mat? Uh, yes, is any Lukash, he's down on mat number yes, one. This Lukash in the heavyweight, it's super heavyweight well, he to be honest. Al almost throws him. Well, let's give his first round. Well, Kouchi again, he just misses out on turning his opponent. Look, we are going to go down to mat number one, and the reason for that is it, it, it's, it's real interest of us. We'll tell you what happens with Ryu and Chetik, but let's kind of have a look at Lukas Kapalik. Oh, we can't. All right. We'll just have to tell you what happens down there then. My minor problems that we have. We'll sort that out. We'll sort that out in a second. Right, the second penalty for the Slovenian. He's going backwards here. Oh, so three, two, two penalties. Yes. Which he must have left One minute left. Attempt from Chetik there. Right, let's go down to mat number one then. If you want to finish off watching Frenchman and the Slovenian and Chetik, or I mean stay on mat number three, but we're going down to mat number one. We're going to pick up the contest between Ruslan Abrazakov of Kazakhstan, and he faces Lukas Kapalik of the Czech Republic. It's Abdurazakov in white and Kapalik in blue. Kapalik fighting in the plus 100 kilo category for a change. Oh, oh nice. Also to get attempt. But uh, having a little bit of problems with the weight of the Amdrazakov. The Kazakh team had a good day of it yesterday, didn't they? Yes, they did. They did and did Ended up similarly like Italy, as I said earlier. They picked up a couple of medals, a, a gold and a third place. 
the fighters showed well yesterday. Is that the second penalty for for, Cap for yes, Capale? Yes, it's the second penalty. I don't know for the first one was. The second one was, was for the grip in the sleeve. Just to get his head up here. Sugaishi from Kapalik puts Wazari on the board. Yuko is the score. That's probably better. Here's a replay. Oh my goodness, look, it's a replay. Yeah. Just about Yuko. <laughs> Mind you, the referee's on the other side of that, so he can't see the back. His colleagues help him out by telling them not enough of the back touched the mat and the Yuko. So I don't see that as a really bad decision. You know, you, you give what you can see, and the table officials had a better view of it, and they just tidied it up. And it's a team, so it's, it's the right thing that the team should give that kind of advice to the matter official they just tidied that up not, not quite sufficient enough control for a score I'm about to say Kumi but oh, not a good grip for a Saikumi yeah. uh, Lukash working on it no he goes back but this time it'd be better now yes yeah Tati Gatami from Lukash Kapalek and the Kazakh fighter Abdrazakov taps out. Kapalik wins his first fight in the plus 100 kilo category. Right, that's tidied that up. Let's go back down to mat number three now because we want to see the contest between Dominic Sommer of Switzerland and Georgi Christian Bodrilau of Romania. That's down on mat number three in the under 81 kilo category. That's the... the weight category that we're going to be following if you want to watch the others then by all means press on any one of those when uh, mr kapalik takes to the map we'll follow him because that's of interest to us he's the big star here in the czech republic and big i suppose is the right word to be using now that he's fighting in the super heavyweight category well at least for this competition anyway the big guy from the Czech Republic. I, think, I think he's the top player who's here. He's number two in the rank, I think, actually. Well, but in the 100 kilos. I was going to uh, say the 100 <laughs> kilos, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. He's the highest ranked player here. And under normal circumstances, you know, you go with that and you, you, you say that. Just like the tidy, I'm um, say, he's not fighting in his weight category. So he's zero. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, and then you can really take into consideration what qualities he has. If you've seen him fight in the plus 100 kilo category before, I haven't. I haven't seen him fight in the plus 100 kilo category before. I suspect that he's going to be just too good. He's going to be simply too good for a lot of those fighters. But we now need to have him, you know, see him tested by some higher quality, uh, real heavyweights. Wh which half of the draw? He's in the top half of the draw, which he, he means that he'll come up against Borbana, the Hungarian. He's the number one seed here, number 22 on the world ranking list. And uh, European champion? Did he win the Europeans? I think that no, no, of course. No, it was Teddy. Sure. Teddy Teddy beat him, didn't he, in Chelyabinsk last year. Teddy Rinia um, beat him. So we may get to see him. But he'll have to get past Burak. Serbest of Turkey, who, who's a whacking great number 70 on the IGF world ranking list. And I tell you, if Kapalik can't beat number 70 in what really is not the, the strongest of divisions, I'll eat my hat. Nice, shaping up good. We should get to see, see um, Boar. Oh. And this should be nicely pawn on a mat number somewhere. three somewhere. Yeah. Swiss boys looking good all around that, that weight category, 81, 90. Dominic Wenzinger and those boys, yeah. Useful. Useful fighters.
Yes, an interesting prospect, Lukas Kapalik up at 100 kilo category. I look forward to seeing that. Oh. Oh, Zari has to sit back down and do it all over again. Let's see the repetition. Oh. This concept was a situation. This time in the favor of Budilla of Romania. And there was a good Senaga escape. Someone should play a little bit more careful in this situation, leading by Yuko and Vasari. Doesn't, doesn't have to do anything just to keep this leadership by two minutes. Good sign again. Not enough control in the upper part of body to turn the body low of Romania to Ipon. But technique was in place, not really successful. Was the first penalty for summer. Still one minute and 11 seconds left from the match. Plenty of time for Borilla to change the score. But he, he has to throw. I don't think that he will make it on the penalties. But let's have a look. Oh! Worded by Vazari and there is a Sekumi. Not a good situation for Sommer. Uh, and I think what you have to remember is this is this is after Sommer threw him for Ippon. You know, the Ippon was, was done and the coach was walking off and it was all done and dusted. And then what do you allow? comes back to take the contest that's got to, that's got to leave you upset hasn't it you know that's going to mess up your day when that sort of kind of stuff happens And now we'll, be, we'll see next match between Dominic Valeriu in white 
and Bach Lukas in blue. Right from the beginning, Dominika showing his extremely strength in, in the upper part of body, making Lukas a little bit of <laughs> problem. keep an eye on the plus 100 kilo category and we'll have a look and see when it is that Kapalik will come back on up there but it'll be a while yet because we've got the under 90 kilo category taking place up there as well two pools of that to work our way through so that that's it won't be a hurry and we'll we'll let you know when that happens in the meantime Valerio Dominica of Moldavia faces Lukasz Boach of Poland. There's no score as yet. 3.30 odd left in the contest. Michal Horak of the Czech Republic is on the mat at the moment, up on mat number one. He faces Michal Jomagi of Estonia. It's the Estonian leading by Wazari up there with a little over two minutes left to go. Dominica looking now to turn his man over here, but that looks well defended, and the referee calls Mate. Not quite able to turn his man. A bit of the right hand to pull across the body was missing there. Couldn't turn his opponent. Boach has picked up the single Shido on the board at the moment. I think there's probably going to be another one now. And he picks up for both fighters pick up penalties. It's perfectly possible because both of them could have wandered out. So <laughs> they both pick up a penalty. What's happening down on mat number one then? Any change in the score there? No, no, no. Still was the on side of Joe Magi, Mikhail. How much time left? Oh, one and a half minutes. Okay, so still a chance there for Horak. Yes, this is, but oh. again, he's fighting in a heavyweight. Whoa. Nicely done by Lukas Boach. Comes up with good score for Wazari after having a couple of penalties against him. But that looks, that looks nice. Nice Ipon Seonagi from the Polish fighter. There it is, right-sided. And good. It was good, wasn't it? Nice, stood up nice and tall. Got his man up there and then went forward, taking him, taking his opponent with him. Horak could do with one of those right now. A nice Seonagi down on mat number one, but he's struggling, isn't he? 
Mazzari down and a, just a minute left to go. So, Lucas Boach leading here. Good, good turnover. Good score from Dominica. Yuko on the board. Work's going to have to work hard. Minute 20 odd left to go, so there's plenty of time. And over he goes, he gets him this time. Yes. The screams in the crowd are for Michel Horak, who's just thrown his opponent with 15 seconds left to go. So Wazari a piece down there, but the Estonian fighter has picked up two penalties. So it could be a tricky little 15 seconds coming up there. There's the, the finish. Well, that was the Seonagi. Coming on to mat number oh, and here is the, the winning technique, I think. There you go. Coming on to mat number three now in the under 81 kilo category, Asaf Chen of Israel faces Ivelo Ivanov of Bulgaria. And Horak has won his contest down on mat number one, yes, by the way. Yes, he has won. He has used his shidos from the beginning of the mat match. And by the way, Zari, 15 seconds before the end of the the fight. So a good result for him, I think. Yeah. Chen in the white judogi, Ivanov in blue. Oh, Ivailov struggling heavily for the score. And we can see the repetition. So to Gary, but the contact with the upper part. <laughs> yeah, it was a little oh, bit untidy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you look like amateur, you know. Twenty left to go. No score yet. Chen and Ivanov. I think you go there. 
Just, a, just about squeezed the Yuko out there, the Chen. Our replay expert is about to demonstrate his skills again. <laughs> He loves that machine, doesn't he? The crowd is shouting for Rashido. Yeah, yeah. Just, just about though, just about. Wor worth it, that score. I'm sure that the Bulgarian doesn't think it's a score, but <laughs> there was just enough there to give him a Yuko, I think. for the Shimiwaza, but it's not there. Chen fighting off that attempted Shimiwaza. Sodagaria, big effort there, but nice brought counter. down by Chen, yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that for a counter. I like that for Yuko. What do you think? Hmm? You right? <laughs> I, he, he does have an earpiece in, but it's not, it's not, I'm not doing the talking. <laughs> 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 He's not listening to me. That was just by, purely by accident. The table officials must have been considering that, had a little look at it, and then gave him the word, but their word was the same as ours, which that was worth a Yuko. It was a big Osoto effort there. It steps round and then nice. gets pulled down. And there's enough of him there being brought down, enough of Ivanov being brought down to give... A score. Last 18 seconds then. Two scores on the board for Chen. He picks up a penalty there for an overly defensive grip, just keeping his man out. Over he goes again. This time Ivanov ending up on his front. Porn, but I think that it yeah, was after, time, after yeah. the ring bell. Chen has a quick look over it because he's not sure. He wasn't quite sure. I, I don't see. I mean, have we got a replay of that at the end? Let's have a look and see. Yes. It was after the second or maybe two after the yeah. after the bell rang. Can we see it again? Once more, let's have a look. That's that that's the score. Yeah. 
One second left. Zero. Zero. And he caused Soramade here. He caused the Soramade. So that should be should be all over. You see, once more, once more. Two things to look at: the clock and the referee's lips. Does he does he call Soramade? He's calling Sor that coincides with his calling the Soramade. He's, he's just at the time that he's calling the Soramade, he's attacking. It's not when he lands, it's when he attacks. This is the important thing. Let's see what they give here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So on mat number three, we will continue with the fights. <coughs> in white, we can see Carlo Massimiliano of Italy. We have seen, I think, his brother, Carlo Giovanni, earlier. And his opponent is Daftian Rafael. And again, I think that we have seen Daftian's brother, maybe, uh, yesterday in the weight category under 66 kilograms. I will ask Sheldon when he comes. Problema. <laughs> Problema, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was uh, that? I'm not sure if Daftian, yeah. this Daftian is a brother or a relative to the Daftian Hohens. I, I don't who think so. And the, and the reason I don't think so is, one, it's not, un, it, 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 it's, uh, it's not an uncommon name. It, it's a fairly common name in Armenia. And two, there's such a big weight difference between the two, and that's unusual. You know, the, fam <laughs> the family thing, you, you know, it, it's unusual that you're going to get one who's 60 and the other one who's 80, 81. However, I will ask. <laughs> And uh, we are in the half of the match on the number 
three. Just no score, only two penalties for Dovtyan, for Minia. And honestly, let's say Karolo is making his way through this match. With big effort, not allowing anything to Dovtyan. Oh, not yet, to be exact. Sheldon is here, so let's find out what the we have. Yeah, we saw we sorted that one out. It's, as I thought, the Armenian referee said it's a common name, and they're not they're not related at all. As far as he knows, they're not related, so they're definitely not brothers. They're not any, any kind of family. They just got have the same name, and he said the the likelihood of them being uh, related is pretty slim because this Davtian actually lives in Moscow. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> it's a long shot. <laughs> oh, but let's have a look at the uh, Carollo. Carollo is Giovanni and Massimiliano. <laughs> I can't believe it. You, 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 you could have told me that when I was up. I'd have asked then. I'll go and ask the Italian now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. A third Chido on the side of Dovtian. Okay, that one is the brother. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one is the brother, but... Uh, so at least we are lucky in, in one case. With one of them, yeah, but, but the Davtian... Well, he, I mean, Davtian and Carollo fighting, but it's a different... Um, different Davtian, but the same Carollo as far as the family is concerned. Right, we hope you're enjoying the broadcast from Prague. Remember, we have got another broadcast taking place simultaneously. We're also showing the women's tournament that's taking place in Moscow, uh, sorry, in Warsaw, <laughs> Warsaw at the moment, Warsaw in Poland. You remember the Moscow because of the death camp? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Moscow was in, was in the brain. <laughs> Right, we've got the 100 kilos coming back up on, num uh, num no, s what is it, up on that number one. We're really only supposed to be having the plus 100 kilos in the 90, isn't it, on that number one? Yes, you're right. But I know yeah. which, which round is there. I mean it seems that it's the plus 100. Yeah, it's plus <laughs> 100 again. They didn't they, and they had some 90s already. So I think, depending on who's up there now, Nikiforenko, Arto is Nikiforenko. So it's the preliminary round. Arto is Nikiforenko. It's the last last of the, uh, first, the round. Your first round contest in the plus 100 kilo category. That's what's happening up on mat number one. Down here on mat number three, we're still going through the first round contest. We just had the contest between uh, Massimiliano Carolo of Italy. He's just defeated Rafael yes. Davtian. 
And uh, we'll see who we've got coming up next. Yeah. Oh, we will see. Yan. We will Saki see Jim Yan. Unguari Attila of Hungary in the white. And uh, Ruzukul of Farkat of Kazakhstan in the blue. Just the Kumikata play. We are right now watching on bad number three. No serious effort uh, just right now. The drop to Inagi, but a little bit out of the position. the referee and the first penalty for avoiding the Kumikata action. Just got out of the mat. Yeah, but no penalty for this. And again, the Kochimaki coming attempt from the Hungarian Attila. And this time successful. Of using the advantage of holding both sleeves and making a drop to Inage. It seems so like an injury, but no. Ruzuklov is good with his knee, with his knee and she was out.
Still one minute and 34 seconds left on a mid number three in a fight between Unguari and Ruzukulov. Unguari in the lead by Yuko. Right now having a tough time defending this leadership. Uh, Sanka Kujime. And now the turnover. Uh, let's see if it's successful and seems so. And this is Osekomi. And it stepped out. So the winner will be Attila Ungvari. So, a little bit of adjustment of mat number three. As you can see, the boys are making the adjustment, just kicking the mat together. So here, here, here they come. The next match on match number three will be between Tipa Konstantin of Moldavia and Pinha Zhao of Portugal. This is a nice fighter, Joao Pina. But usually under 73. Yeah, right? he's a, a, a classy fighter, I think, at, at any weight. He's one of the ones that could, could be successful in another weight category you know you you find some people who move up a weight and they just disappear but i think joao pina has nice judo and i think that that will translate from 73 to 81 without too much trouble you could always look up the record and see how he has done and what he's done but he's a nice nice fighter I like watching him. not a big crowd but we've got any number of referees sitting behind us and I don't mean referees who've got badges just crowd referees all shouting she do white she do blue and so come white <laughs> it's not off-putting it's just so senseless you know you know we've got 
we've got um, good quality referees and a commission who can make those decisions. Uh, leave it to them. Did you see the action that they're talking about, this one? No, no. Uh, okay. Well, I happen to miss that one as well. Let's see what the decision is. I, 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 di I, I didn't see it. Well, it was the Moldavian who grabbed the leg. Grabbed the leg. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if, if we had a replay of that, but well, we're surely not we could have. But yeah. our technician, our yeah, technician is in, in He's engaged in <laughs> other conversation. Well, that I'll tell you what, uh, Matt number two's got a tasty little fight coming up. Komron Shostopirion of Tajikistan faces, faces Alexander Mameliuk of Estonia. That's not a bad little fight. In, meanwhile, we've got the Moldavian. Uh, no, well, no, replay, replay, <laughs> Re replay. <laughs> we got the replay technician going. Gennady 
A na to tady číslo 3 nastoupí v bílém kimonu Luka Poveta, Itálie a v modrém kimonu Jiří Petr, Česká republika. So back we will see another Czech player on the number three, Petr Jiří. He is a youngster who tries his luck and collects experiment experiences here in the European Open. Czech fighter. Yes, yes. A youngster who is just collecting experiences, as I said earlier. But I like it. If you, Italian. If you just read the back of his, when, when he, he he's got his back to us, the Czech fighter. Oh, he goes over Yuko. Left-sided Sionagi from the Italian. Poeta, Luca Poeta on the board with a Yuko. I'm just saying for the Czech fighter. If you just read the two things that are there, what do you get? Petr. Petr. CZD. <laughs> Petr Czech. Petr Czech, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah, you mean that, Peter Czech? That's <laughs> Peter Czech. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just a, it's Sunday, you know, it's slow time. We haven't had that many puns and it's <laughs> early in the morning. I thought I'd just drop that one in. Now you are looking for the football match after the Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not sure who they're playing this afternoon. No, I don't know. But we've got, we've got our first look at Peter Czech. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on from that one. Still got a while in the under 90 kilo category up on, on map number one. That's a big category there. 34 competitors in that weight, but they're 48 in this one. So this is where the time is going to be taken up unless of course we get quite a few ippons could be Chimata, and he turns, he just turns him there, doesn't he? You see, he, f he feels, this is what we were talking about with the Belgian fighter yesterday. He goes to the ground, but he, he's lost control. This is no longer his technique. He's being turned here. See, Blue's attacking with the Uchimata, and now White goes, but he, he's going for the counter. You can see he's going for the counter there. That's the difference. And it was clearly visible from this position. Well, you know, yesterday we tried to explain that to the Belgian coach, but he wouldn't have it. <laughs> he wouldn't have it. Th there was a point there when you could say that the Czech fighter was throwing him. But there was also another point where you could say he was no longer being thrown. He was throwing himself. He said, OK, I'm going, but now I'm going to try and take you over. That's when it becomes a counter. You know, people are absolutely certain, you know, about the, the point at which a counter comes on. That was nice. Yeah, Yuko's good. Yuko's good. Oh, they liked it even better. Here's the slow motion. Yeah. Good beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wazari. He's really going for it now, isn't he, the Italian? After a couple of minutes, he just put the foot down and really went for it. Got a couple of good scores. And Poeta finishes off. 
Peter. All right. We are moving along swiftly here. A few contests ending before time. We're going to need that in the under 81 kilo category with such a big group, 48 fighters in total. Here's the replay. Another Ippon Seonagi. Nice and low and driving. So he's nice and close in there. Yesterday we spoke to Soshin Katsumi. This is where the takeover was. I think that's a really good illustration. I'd like to keep that, that clip and just show people when, we, when we're talking about a counter. What is the difference between... Yeah, throwing and, and being and throwing, thrown. Yeah, and, and at what point do you, do you? There must be a point when you recognise, okay, this fighter is now taking it over. Right, who have we got now then? Yeah, and who's down on map number three? Who have we got? Three, we can see Halas Mariano, Romania, fighting against Kubienets. Kub Kubienets, Jakub of Poland. Kubienets. Okay, Halas in the white judogi, Kubienets in blue and just to remind you i can see it's a polish fight and just to remind you that in warsaw we've got the women's event taking place we'll try and update you with regard to the re results they're not quite the same numbers that we've got here in prague so the likelihood is that will finish sometime before that's nice you go Again, the same. And again, for Rico. So three goes on the scoreboard, three minutes left. And Kuchimata attempt. Uchimata situation, but this time Kubinets was able to twist out of the throw and landed on his front, so he avoided any score change.
here you can see you can see the throws of Halas Marian from Romania. Nice switch, Mata. I think that this this one was the fight. No, this one was for Yuko, and now for Dupon. So in white, Antivirta of Finland, in blue, Yerzan Abdulayev of Kazakhstan. Antiverta in his position in his position. Abdul just cannot get out of it. And there's this little conversation between the referees, as you could see. And here comes the first penalization. A good grip. Antiverta still a little, little bit more active in the Kumikata. Now I'm trying uh, to move in again. And as you can see, he's holding both collars and he cannot get the sufficient wheel will turn over in the hands to roll the opponent over. So just now, right in the middle of the match, only uh, Shidos on the scoreboard. And 3 to 1 in favor of Virta Anti of Finland. It seems that, that there will be the situation, as Sheldon said, three Shidos, and one of them has to open. It means that one of them should throw on a pawn or be thrown on a pawn. Let's see for the second time if this will happen or or not.
Antivirtov doing good work on I in this match. Still activity on his side. And this time it was a little bit of a false attack. So there are three to two Shidos, but still no opening from the match to, to get the opponent to change the score. And first time when Andrew got his grip. Good drop to Inage. And this time, and this time success for three seconds before the end. <laughs> so a good win for Abdullah. Just using the time, throwing three seconds before the end, and giving Virta no time to change the score. It was, a, it was not a good. Good tactical move from Virta. Abdullah has has done two or three Suina Suina guess in a line. So it was the third one on which he threw the Zuko. Match number three in a Yerjan Abdullah versus the Kazakhstan. So let's see the next round between Janec Minik of Czech Republic and Vitaly Ursu of Moldova. There is a big hit difference between these competitors. Let's see what this match will bring to us. We have got some Moldovan spectators right behind us, and they are supporting their colleague. Oh, a nice throw! By Ochigari. And now a Saikomi for Janic Minek. And this will be to Keta. A Saikomi again.
Uh, it's a shame just uh, you go for him. And he's making, working his position again in the Nevaza. And now look at the Uchigari. Good work from him. So we are getting into the half of the match. Between each we of Czech Republic and Vitalie of Moldova. Oh, and she may have We cannot see anything from uh, this point. Madani is working hard in Nevaza. He's saving time. And the clock is ticking. But just now two minutes left from the match. Jan has to avoid the situation when they are both close enough. Because it's a strong position of the Mo Moldavian competitor. It's not a good grip for an Echminek. And it's better. Well, he will take the Nevaza and work in it. And another seven or eight seconds spared for Jan Echminek of Czech Republic. Still a minute and seven seconds left of the match. Last minute, which he has to withstand his position. A good Ashivaza. Nice win again for Vazari and uh, Vesete Ipon. Nicely tacked. There was a fake attack from Vitalie and when he returned back to his original position Jan Echminek used the position and threw the Ippon Soinage to Mazari.
So in white we are watching Naulu Yosateki of Fiji. In blue, Lima Diogo of Portugal. The second Portugal fighter in this weight category. The first is Jao Pinha, who has won his first match by Hansu Kumake of his opponent. And in the weight category under 81, we will see another little bit <laughs> another player from a little bit exotic country. It will be Diawarabaye of Senegal. But he, he has a bye in the first round, so he has at least one or maybe two hours of break. A good also to Gary. Little bit of turned over. But avoided by Yuko. using his movement and the power trying to score Leading by Yuko, but picking three shadows in a line. <laughs> Two minutes. Not a good start. For Shido means Hansu Kumake. For Naulu Yosateki. So the winner is Lima Diogo of Portugal. So we continue on man number three with the weight category under 81. In white, we can see Adelat Misin of Kazakhstan. In blue, Marek Lisovsky of Poland. A good Neva's action. Just a little bit to turn over the fighter of Kazakhstan. And on this time. Well, this action showed a, showed a lot from the preparation of the Polish competitor. He likes the fight in Evaza. And it seems to me that he will use these skills. And he gets down in this match. to Sudoga reaction. A 
awarded by Uko. And a counter. Uchimata. Not finished. And now the counter, as you can see. Awarded by Vazari. So Vazari and Yuko on the side of Missy Nadilet of Kazakhstan. Three minutes and two seconds left from the match. And the referees are watching the situation one, once again. And the Vazari was cancelled.
Stand up.
When, it, when will it happen? 3.30. And if we have time to set it up, we'll set it up again. Well, we know we have a general idea where it... Matteo Malconcini of Italy throwing Milan Cola of uh, Cola Milan of Hungary there for Ippon. We're not going to be able to get a replay of that one because simply because the replay technician is busy doing something else. He's got his hands full with four or five other tasks at the moment. But take 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 our word for it. Malconcini of Italy throwing Cola Milan for. Ippon. And this Ippon ended the round one in the weight category under 81. Right, so now it can't be that far. I mean, Borbana is on the mat now. He's the number one seed in the plus 100 kilo category. So it means the plus 100 kilo category is back on down at mat number one. We will go down there at some stage to see Lukas Kripalik. Lukas Kripalik. But before we get that far, we've got oh, a Slovenian and a Kazakh fighter. I'm going to let Jan introduce those two fighters. It will be Tseti Chesenko in white and Beksan Abdullayev of Kazakhstan. Okay, it's... Chetik, we, sure we saw earlier on, didn't we? We saw, we saw him we saw earlier him on. And uh, he's in the white judogi and he faces Abdul Aliyev of Kazakhstan. There you go. About Abdullah Bekirzan. This is another Abdullah Yerzan. What, in the same category? In the same category. <laughs> they're, they're just sending families, aren't they? <laughs> 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 they're, they're, they're trying to mess us up. Confusing us with all these names. I'm a little bit confused of the fight because it's the second fight in the second round and I haven't seen Christian Schaboltz of Hungary fighting against Karolo. Uh, he didn't. Karolo fought against Sana, the Czech, rep Czech yes, fighter. Yes, but in the second round. The right, okay, let's have a look and see what's happened. I'll just refresh our screen. It could be that they fought and we didn't see it. And the other thing is that we're offline as well, so... That's not going to help, is it? I'm not quite sure because the last fight bit was between Collar and Marconcini. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there should be Christian and Carlo fighting. Problema. Nema problema. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look and see why this hasn't. I'll just have a look at the contest sheets on map three. So we will switch on mat number one, where it takes the place. The fight between Terbest Burak of Turkey and Lukas Kripalek of Czech Republic. 
in the super heavyweight category. Lukáš Krpalek, the top player in the weight category under 100. Today fighting in a plus 100. Let's have a look what he can do in this heavier group of <coughs> competitors. Just fought well in the first round by defeating Abdrazakov Ruslan of Kazakhstan. Now making a good work in Nevaza for his Kansetsu Vaza. Sudogarei attempt on the edge of the mat and again. No score change, but Kripal has showed his technique to Serbest. Let's see if he can repeat it, but with a score. And here will come the penalization, I think. And nice Ippon from the first grip on mat number one. So Kapalik has made the second round and he will fight against Borbarna. The men seeded one in the weight category plus 100 kilo. So that we can get back to the mat number three in the weight category under 81 kilograms. Back to the fight between Cetic and Abduliev. Right now the medical support is finishing the injury of the Abduliev. There was some bleeding from nose. Seems okay. The medic has just cleaned the blood from one and, and another competitor, and now then we will continue with the fight.
So finally, everything okay? And we can continue. Two minutes and 25 seconds left. Three shadows on the side of Abduliev, one on the side of Cetic. Good turnover in the Vaza. Just getting to the top. Now pull the luck out. Oh. It's a shame that Abdullah is twisted away from the Saikomi. Good work from Chetic. And again, there is, there is blood from the head. We're going to go over to mat number two at the moment because we've got this blood injury that's going to take a little bit of time. Oh, mat number one, I beg your pardon. We're going to go over to mat number one because I'm using the camera for something else. I just remembered that. Ulisbaya uh, Durenbaya of Mongolia is on the mat against Vladimir Giordi Simonescu of Mongolia, uh, uh, sorry, of Romania. And just as we have finished doing that, we're probably going to be able to go back to three. Anyway, let's stay down with. Ulzi Bayer, Duren Bayer for a moment. Mongolian heavyweight. Apparently his father did judo as well. He was chatting with one of the Mongolian coaches and he was saying his father was Ulzi Bayer. Good fighter.
Well, we're looking at the plus 100 kilo category at the moment. Andre Volkov of Russia and Mikhail Horak of the Czech Republic. There's no score at the moment. Two minutes and, well, a little over two minutes left to go in that contest. Sashi was a counter there from Volkov, bringing his man down. Well, I liked it for Yuko. Really did. Yeah, Yuko, there you go. That's a good score.
Volkov coming out there after that uh, single Yuko score. Russian heavyweight, the winner there. Nice counter with the Ashi was a good work from the big guy. Quick thinking as Horak came out of that Osadagari attempt. Volkov came up with the Ashi was Now we can go back down to. I oh know we're going to stay to, s to watch uh, Paskevich, uh, Paskevchus of um, Lithuania and Pinta of the Czech Republic. There's another Czech fighter on there. Let's give them the, the benefit of, of that one. Pinter landing on his front there. It's, it's not a dissimilar situation, actually, to the one with Horak, where Horak got turned over, but he landed on his side and then went on to his front, whereas Pinter landed on his front. He was already going on to his front when he hit the ground and then flattened out. <laughs> Speaking of flattening out... He was flattened out there, yeah. Another one. Yeah, that was a nice, nice hip on there. Another Czech fighter bites the dust, but that was Pretty, pretty well, pretty well done. Right, coming up next, let's go back down to mat number three because we were watching the under 81 kilo category. The fight coming up there, Yaromo, Yaromir Musil of the Czech Republic faces Ivalio Ivanov of Bulgaria. So, a chance to see another Czech fighter. Let's hope that they have better luck than they have the last two contests that we've shown. We saw Horak going out and Pinter going out won't want to see three in a row so here we come we are going to have a fight I couldn't see the his opponent for a moment Ivanov but he's made an appearance he's got both hands heavily strapped up left and right just steps off that as also comes over and scores with Yuko right away. Volgeren having to defend now. Got both feet trying to push his Czech opponent away and avoid getting caught on the ground. He looks pretty tight there. And now also just squeezing him out but managing to turn onto his front and having to defend again. Anxious times then for Ivanov. 
Wilson looking to work on the arm, but nothing happens there. That was the score. You come on the board, there's the lead, and we're inside the first first minute. Just drifting off to the edge there. So he's got to be careful. He comes up with a left-sided attack, but can't turn his opponent over. And Ivanov with the heavily bandaged hands, both of them strapped up, the wrists, the fingers. Got to be uncomfortable. I think first minute gone, Yuko on the board for Musil leading here. Right, I'm going to be joined uh, by my co-commentator again. Jan is ready to take, a, take his seat. Right, Jan Bartel joins us again with Jaromir Musil on the tatami and Ivelo Ivanov. It's Musil leading by a single Yuko and here is Jan Bartel. Here, Jan. Okay, thank you, Sheldon. trying to perform the same throw by the hips as he did in the first 15 seconds and score the Yuko. But Iwailo is now careful for this attack. were tied it up and we continue a nice Ochigari oh a strong position for both of them situation. Let's see what the referees will tell to this. So nothing. And the match continues. position of the previous action, Ochigari Uchimata and the counter, and this one. Even of Ivailo is putting Geromir under the pressure. Still one minute and 50 seconds left for Eromir to withstand the pressure and to win this match. Still a very good position for him. Leading by Yuko, Shido on side of Ivanov. Right, right. 
And now Chico, the situation for Aramir and strong throw. And this should be avoided. And this. You go for Aramir. Again, attack, balls, attack of the other competitor and strong pulling of the leg. To you go. Nicely finished. Ivanov still trying to get behind Veromir and to break him up to the back. Hopefully not successful yet for the Czech crowd. A lot of people in the sports hall supporting Veromir Musil. Maybe you can hear from the speakers. First penalization for Eromir. And a nice combination. Nice combination. The hip technique and the uh, Periotoshi. The referees decided not to avoid the situation and 15 seconds left from the match oh good good movement from Eromir trying to spare the time and now we can see the combination yes splendid Eromir has done it and he is in the third round because he had a bye in the first round. Nice throw from Eromir, as you can see in the repetition. So we can continue on number three with Carlo Massimiliano of Italy and Cepaniak Tomáš of Poland. Cepaniak ended up 
on the bronze medal place in the last European Championship in the juniors. Now fighting on a European Open here in Prague. We are just in the half of the match between Karolo and Cepaniak. One sheet on side of Cepaniak. Uh, otherwise the scoreboard is clean. for both of them. Chipanyak attacking and right after the attack Karlo using the disbalanced position of Chipanyak by throwing a Yuko.
Na už Čepaniak ain't able to put Karl under the pressure. Still 30 seconds left and plenty of time. Ah, uh, plenty. Enough time to throw. So here's the end. One Yuko, one side of Karolo, and it's the Yuko that decides. Well, the, the number one seed uh, fell the way in. You mean uh, Christian Jabos? Christian Jabos. That's why we didn't see him. He, he ah. fell the way in. Oh well. so right. This should, this should be a nice one. Mm. Set it down. Mevaljevic of Montenegro faces Ungvar Attila of Hungary. There's Jan again. <laughs> <laughs> Stelman Valjevic seated as a number three. Currently the rank 38. Little bit of a paper favorite in this match. moment. Good arm work, which ended by Yuko. And now strong grip. Oh, I can see the Yuko. And from the strong grip results a Shido on the side of Ungvari. And Sheldon was right. This is a very vivid match between these two.
Radojevic getting the top position. As you can see from the match, he controls it. Even though Attila is moving and trying to find a way to attack. Radojevic is controlling. Waiting for his waiting for his moment. Nice Ashivaza. Caught him a little bit high up, didn't he? I mean, I, he looked, the, the, it had the kind of shape of the Surikomiyashi, it had that little bit of shape like that, but it almost came out as Hizagaruma. I think there, caught him up at the knee, didn't he? And then wheeled him over. I think I'm going to identify that as Hizagaruma. Yes, it's definitely. I, I don't think he intended it from the first moment, but he catched the leg. Where he catched it? Radovic was falling away a little bit, which made it difficult for him to keep the foot in contact low down. So that's probably why it ended up that little bit higher up. I hope if we see the repetition of the last throw on the number three. The referees are waiting for the table. A bone was cancelled. And there will come the Shido, I think. But it doesn't mean anything for Mrvalevic. He will do it the third round with the Shido or without it. the third, I think, but there are nine seconds left of the match. Not yet. Again, we have to see the situation again. Uh, 
Again, the situation at the end of the match. And here it goes. Srdjan Mrvalevic of Montenegro has born. So on man number three, we'll see Jao Pinha in white and Smug Stewart in blue. Pinha of Portugal and Stewart of Great Britain. And again, the one, one hand in the tech on the drop so inage. Not working properly, or maybe a part of a tactical preparation of the match. And this one was better. And uh, <coughs> Shidows are equal on the board. One minute and four seconds left. And she the situation. Which Pinya try to counter, but not successfully. Chimata and Sankaku situation and there will come the turnover. No. Well prepared but ain't able to turn him over. Oh. Just a sleeve to to grab. Otherwise, it was it was perfectly done. And here comes the shadow for Pinya. Twelve seconds before the end. Oh, and here it is done. Third shadow. Slightly before the end, and then Ipon for Stewart of Great Britain. Mm -hmm. 
match number three in our next squad representing Great Britain. So, man number three, we'll see Brewer Mark of New Zealand, a man seated as a number two in the weight category under 81. Currently rank 26. And against him in blue, Gennady Pretivati of Moldova. Since it seemed as a good concert to the situation, but Brewer was likely able to escape. And there's some blood bleeding over the nose of Petivati. So the medical team was called. So the blood was wiped away and Petrivati is ready again for the match. A good situation. And Shimevaza. A good situation for Bruger, but didn't have enough time to tighten the Shimevaza. Enough to be.
poor attempt. A better one. And the third will be the best. <laughs> Just past the half of the match. Two minutes and 22 seconds left. So we came to the last minute on minute number three, still nil-nil. Desperate to me. Like he expected to be much more better, and he is not doing very well against Spertivati. But he will make it. He will won by one shido because it's five seconds left right now, and Bruver will be out. And here it comes. So, as like a stay man number. Men seeded like a number one and number two are out of the contest in the weight category under 81. Blue. 
So in white, Poeta Luca of Italy, and in blue, Shaparian and Daranik of Armenia. The first fight for Armenian judoka. Poeta has already beaten Petr Jiří of Czech Republic in the first round. So he's a little bit of warmed up for the Luka Poeta was hit to the knee, not deliberately, but he looked, it was very painful. Good drop, and luckily with no right hand to be successful with the turnover. Three minutes left on mat number three. Nice to meet Gashi. So, in half of the match, the first shadow now giving an advantage to Shaparian, but there's still a plenty of time to change, change the match. One shadow in in half doesn't mean anything. Twenty or thirty centimeters for his opponent, and that's why he wasn't able to finish it. Just too far. This one was a good one. Good control 
of the shoulder. But the legs weren't in the right position. He moved with them, but not sufficiently to get under Chaparti Chaparian. So I would like I would like to switch on mat number one, where we will see the quarterfinal fight between Borbarna of Hungary and Krpalek Lukáš of Czech Republic. The competitors are just coming. Here's the big one then. This is the one that the crowd has been waiting for. And a really interesting contest here because this is not just another journeyman heavyweight that Kapalik is up against. This is a real contender. It's a real medal prospect, world and Olympic level. Borbana. So... You've got real competition for the Czech home man. Jan, how do you see this one going? Oh, I think that if Lukáš withstands the first three or four minutes, he will use his enormous physical font and win the contest. But it will be harsh. In your opinion? Well... There's a, there's a semi-final place at stake here. There's got to be some nerves on the part of Borbana, who's now facing someone from out of his weight category. He doesn't normally face him. It's in Lukic's home city, really. And the, all the pressure, really, is on, uh, is on Bor. Yes, it is, because Lukas, so if he loses, so what? And, and Bohr can't win. And by that, I mean, if he beats him, everyone says, well, you know, you're a heavyweight. And uh, uh, Kapalik has just gone up for a little bit of a fight. He's, he's, you know, he's only messing around. And he, if he loses, they're going to say, well, what kind of heavyweight are you? you know, you <laughs> you're supposed to be one of the top 20 in the world, and you let someone who's not even in your weight category come and beat you. So he can't really win, can he, <laughs> Bohr? No, it works on a paper. Yeah. <laughs> Palak has just got to be careful not to, you know, miss, no, uh, uh, to underestimate the power difference between himself and Bohr. Because I know Lukas is strong, but Bohr, I believe, is stronger. I think it is, but and, uh, there are also the kilos that... Yeah, there's a good few yeah. kilos going away there. 20, 25, 25 maybe. 25 kilos maybe. And it should make the difference. Kapalik will have speed on his side. And the other thing that, that Kapalik does have is far greater nevaza. Just got to be careful with that hand around the waist. That's the thing, almost. Just looking to take him over left-sided there. 
the crowd appreciating that. He's limping slightly. I think it's the, it's the right foot that's giving him some trouble. There he goes over again on the left-hand side. And here's the chance on the ground. And, and immediately you saw Barban, uh, Borbana looking Brilliant. for the exit. <laughs> you know, he, wanted, he doesn't want any part of that, does he? Oh, okay. I think that everybody knows the name of the combination that Lukas is using. Second penalty for Bor now. 3.20. Plenty of time left on the clock here. Nice grip high up from Kapalik. There's the left arm going around the collar, just troubling Bor, making it uncomfortable for him. He likes the right arm around the waist, pulling um, Kapalik in closer to him. He's wandered out there again. He's yeah. dicing with, with danger here. Yes, he is. He gets away with it. All needs the head up. Doesn't want to get down there. He just doesn't like that right arm up around the, Not the collar. He needs to br break that off if he can. Well, not with both hands, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think that he knows it, <laughs> that he cannot use both yeah. hands. He's trying to get away. Trying to get the dominant grip. That goes over there. there. That was a nice. That was good because he didn't wait. There'll be no um. score there. Kapalik was into that pretty quickly. Half the contest. This has been a really, really good matchup. Got to be careful. Yes, yes. Boar starts wandering off the edge. Ochigari. And then the Oso is a great combination in Harai Goshi. Third time round. Not quite the speed of Sanja Girl, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or um, Sanja Surin, I should say. Not quite the same speed as a Mongolian 66 kilo fighter who put together three uh, techniques in a row. But Kapalik there not stopping with the second. You know, combination is good, but there was a third attack in there as well, and that was the, 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 the really good thing. Yeah, Bohr hasn't attacked. That's the third penalty that he's picked up. Quite rightly so as well. Just co not coasting, but not able to cope with the group. And now yeah. Kapalik doing really good and oh. comes down. Yuko, good score. Ojigari from the Czech fighter. He's all over him now. Big problems for Bohr here. Because he's three Shidos down, he's a Yuko down, and Kapalik still pressing on the gas. He's still coming forward. This is really good. Better gripping from Kapalik. He's, he's not sitting back. He's in the lead, but he's not sitting back. There's a big uh, uh, Haramaki Komi attempt from Bohr. But Kapalik is growing into this contest. You can see he's got more confidence now. Still troubled by that knee, the right knee. And a good grip. Better. That's really positive. Mm -hmm. He's the one that, that's dictating the pace of this. And Bohr, he, oh, he's going oh, again. Got the way. Really putting the pressure on here. This is one of the best fights of the weekend because of all the things that surround it. Uh, it's done. And it's done. Done and dusted. Couldn't do it. He, he couldn't keep up with the tempo. We were talking about the speed. Uh, Kapalik would have speed on his time, and all he did was push up the, the tempo of the contest. The pace of the contest proved too quick for uh, Borbana. And I'm not talking about the, the speed with which, oh, he picked up a Shido for pulling his own gear out. Yeah, yeah, that, that's Shido. <laughs> so it wasn't, wasn't Bohr. Uh, a, an infantile error from the Czech fighter there to pull his own gear out. Better grip from Bohr. He, he wants to get off that, that, that right arm around the head. He doesn't want that. A lazy effort from Bohr. And now the Nevaz action. You're, you're not going to catch a fighter of Kapalik's quality with that little drop down. Yeah, he's turning him over. Too strong. Oh, he's changing into the Shimewaza. He's looking for the arm here. And he can roll the right way. Oh, Shimi wasn't in. He's got yeah. it as well. <laughs> that was real quality. 
a comprehensive defeat of a top quality or if, yeah I'm, I'm gonna say top quality because it, it, as far as the weight category is concerned he's a top quality fighter and that was a bit of a beating that Kapalik dished out there every aspect every aspect of the contest standing up on the ground gripping every aspect he, he beat Bohr on and I wasn't going to talk about the the depth of the quality in the heavyweight field but when you see the under 100 kilo fighter coming up and dishing out that kind of treatment to a high quality or a highly highly rated fighter in the plus 100 kilo category you have to ask yourself that question is the heavyweight category the super heavyweights are they really that good Jan, <laughs> that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I don't know what, what to answer. <laughs> Anything you want. Give your opinion. You may wax lyrical <laughs> as, as you see fit. Uh, but, um, All right, uh, so uh, okay, uh, uh, easier questions then. Was there any phase of that contest in which you felt that Borbana had an advantage over, uh, over Kapalik? There were some moments when Barna got the... A better grip, grip. Better grip. Right. So, so let's talk about grips then. Overall, who was the better gripper in the that fight? The better fighter? gripper was definitely Lukas Kapalik. Right. So when we talk about grips in that context, when we talk about grips, Kapalik had the beating of Bohr as far as grips were concerned. Movement and positioning around the mat? And definitely Lukas. Uh, because he was quicker, he was a very faster. The ability to avoid uh, errors. No. He got only one, or right? <laughs> okay, so, so he just <laughs> got one for pulling yeah. the gear. He was better him on on on, on those technicalities. The general uh, uh, Tachi was a. What did we see from Bo? No, nothing. Right, and then finally, and the Ne was a. Well, well that's, that's the, where we ended it. Every end. every aspect of the contest, Kapalik Kapalik. Kate came out on top. Right, we come now to the next contest in the plus 100 kilo category. Ulzibaya Durenbaya of Mongolia faces Andrei Folkov of Russia. It's Ulzibaya of Mongolia in the white jadogi, Folkov of Russia in blue. And here's Jan again. We will stick on this fight and then we will switch back to A181. So, Ulzi Bayar in white, Folkov in blue. Just having a struggle with the activity. Both of them were passive. Elusibar is starting to work with his collar arm. It seemed. It seemed hopefully for him, but no, the action stopped. They are both both and pulling and pushing, but no effort in the kum kumikata and in the movement. Or is it by a little bit better? And the referees avoided the situation. So she don't side of Folkov. Thank 
So we'll have the match. Only shadows on the scoreboard. Still nil nil. Rosie uh, Bayer working. And her back. <laughs> bear, bear. bear hug. <laughs> Hug bear. <laughs> and Harry Makikomi attempt from Vol Volkov. Volkov knows his position and he's now putting a leg on a gas pedal, it seems to me. And it was a nice moment for Urzi Bayar. Pressure on the side of Volkov, which resolved into the opening of the Svenage. But there's no score change. Good, so then Raza. We'll switch on to mat number three because there is a Czech judoka Janej Minek fighting. He's in blue and in white. In white, it's Alan Kubetsov of Russia. Kubetsov a little bit stronger in the grip. Now putting Honza into the out. A good activity. And a strong grip. To check to the card, I think that there will be some penalization. So here it comes, and three minutes and 30 seconds left. Still at plenty of time. So both of them will show us some score. Good attack. It's a shame that he 
didn't put some combination into it because it was well prepared position for Ryan Minek. Position. Nice change of the direction. And we just got into the half of the match. That's the position for Jan. Change to Ochi. Oh. It should be Ochi Garino do Soto. And a nice counter. Rewarded by Vozari. So come on, come on, man. Then it turned 20 seconds. Still a big amount of time for two shadows or for some score. And they are checking the leg wrap. So let's see if there was or not. It was the side to the referee, so he had a better point of view. fight one minute just passed 53 seconds left a good fight in the co combination there should be Ochigari it would be then on side of Janic Minek Kubetsov is a quality fighter. Yes, is his. But I think well for him proved to that he's yeah, yeah, he absolutely to stay in there that yeah. long and give him that competition. Yeah. That he's able to withstand the pace of the match. Janic has done a lot of work. I remember him last year when we fought together and in the comparison with the fight I have in, in January, it was a completely different player. <laughs> <laughs> he's, wor he's worked hard, yeah? He's worked hard, yes, yes, yes. See, the difference between... Who was it that we were watching earlier on 
Uh, when, do when there was a Czech fighter we were watching earlier on, who at three and a half minutes was pretty much done and dusted. Right uh, at the end there, after Easy five Sean. minutes, yes. see, five minutes, he was still going. You, you had your Czech fighter here who was five minutes, and he was still going for Kubetsov. This is that difference in, in the physical preparation form. and physical, physical preparedness. And this boy's ready, you know. Yes, yes, definitely. He's ready. No, no. Little bit of a technique, and yeah, and then mm. yeah, can do something. We're going to get a, a, a visit from the governor of a local region, and I just wanted to check with you the, the name of this region. Yes, what is it? Sir? It's Olomouc region. Olomouc region. Olomouc. Okay, Olomouc region. Okay, I'm not sure what the governor's name is, but we're going to. Oh, I come from this region, so oh, really, <laughs> okay, this is this is him. Uh, Jiří Rozbořil. Rozbo Rozbořil. 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 OK. Jiří Rozbořil, governor of Olomouc. Olomouc. Yes. Yes, you pronounce it well. Olomouc. Olomouc region. Olomouc. Olomouc region. Right, OK, I'll just make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> right, who have we got now then? Lima Diogo and Ebrahim Alain. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm leave Sheldon here alone and get some coffee. piece of a food and Co a coffee. coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that you're off to the coffee again. <laughs> right. Here I am then. Jan's off for a coffee again. Match number two. Lima and Wazari ahead and trying to work something on the ground now. The winner of this contest will face Alan Kubetsov of Russia. What a task that's going to be. Still the Wazari lead. Plenty of time on the clock for Apramian to come back. I'm not sure if we've spoken about Apramian before. It could be that he's got Armenian parentage. I, I seem to remember that we spoke to him once before. He kind of confirmed that. Gets caught there though. Misses out with the Ashi Wazir and walks straight on to that low Murate Tsionagi. Well, decided against the Rosari and they think better worth better worth Ipon. Right, let's 
look quickly then at what's coming up next. Gan Tushinjago of Mongolia faces Marek Lizowski of Poland. It'll be Gan in the white judogi, Lizowski in blue. That's coming up next. Gan will be desperate to win this contest. Won't want to have come all this way and to go home to Mongolia empty handed. But there's still a long way to go because he had a bye in the first round, so this is his second round contest. Not, sure, not quite sure why he's got round one there. It is round it is in actual fact round two. The Gan Tushinjago Marek Lizovsky contest is a round two contest. So the winner of this will go into round three. There's then the quarter final and then semi final. So there's a bit of bit of a trek for the Mongolian. <laughs> no pun intended. If he's gonna make serious progress in this competition. and felt that Lizovsky attack coming and managed to block that. What he couldn't do was to avoid the passivity penalty. It's turned over here. Really odd attempt at that technique. Gone lucky to come away with his arm intact. Half the contest, gone. No score yet. Lizovsky picks up a second penalty, but the Mongolian has, he's been penalized twice as well. Well, there was a, a big mistake from Lizovsky why on earth would you try to bear hug a Mongolian? <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> oh. He really paid for that, didn't he? Wasn't, that wasn't the cleverest of attempts. 
that I'd ever, or the cleverest choice of attack that I've ever seen. Oh, nice right-sided low Tanatoshi attempt from Gunn. Lisowski just managing to step, step over probably because Gunn couldn't come up with the kind of speed he needed to catch his opponent. But nice look to that effort from Gunn Tushin Jago. Left-sided Tomoenagi attempt from Gaan moving off to his left and just looking to take his opponent over. Brings him down on his side and scores Yuko. effort there from Gan. It doesn't catch Lisovsky. Slightly untidy in the execution. There they go to the ground and nothing coming from that one. The referee calls Mata and stands the pair back up. There's a little over a minute. Actually, no, there's just a minute left to go here. Left Uchimata attempt from Lisovsky. Gan steps off that. And then attacking again. Low left sided from Gan, but he doesn't catch Lisovsky. Two scores on the board for the Mongolian. Gan Dushinjago, Zari, and Yuko. Kosotogaki attempt from uh, Lisovsky, a strong one as well, but Gan is up to defending it. And that was a poor effort. Coming in the last few seconds of the contest as well, tired looking Lisovsky. Well, Gan gets his wish, which is to get into the next round. That was important for the Mongolian. We see how he goes on from there. As I said earlier, he's the winner of this contest, and it happens to be Gan Tushinjagal. He'll face Alan Kubetsov of Russia in the third round. Coming up next, Matteo. Marconcini of Italy will face Jasenko Ketic of Slovenia. It will be Carolo in the white judogi and Ketic in blue. Number two 
Right, my mistake about the calling of the names there. Misread the screen. We had the, the first fighter correct, Matteo Marconcini of Italy. But his opponent is the Senegalese, Bay Dia, uh, Diawara. So I, I apologize about that. I got the. I, I got Marconcini's opponent wrong. Ketic will take part in the next contest. Marconcini bringing down the Awara. And now the Juju Gatami. Neatly done. They're already in the repechage contests down in map number one. Borbana and Andre Volkov in the repechage down on map number one. Marconcini, the winner of that particular contest. Let's see who we got coming up now. Giovanni, Giovanni Carolo of Italy faces Jesenko Ketic of Slovenia. Now we've got the right men on the mat. Let's sit back and watch this one. Big Makikomi, Makikomi attempt there from Carollo. It doesn't come off. Ketic able to just find a way of turning off that. Thank you. 
Lukas Wach of Poland is the winner of that contest. He goes through to the next round. We've got Jaromir Musil of the Czech Republic now facing Massimiliano Carolo of Italy. Carono, sorry, Carolo in the blue judogi, Musil will be in white. Right, here we go. It's Jaromir Musil in the white judogi and Massimiliano Carolo in blue. Problems here for the arm. He'd really like to. Number 
Man number three in the white judo game, Sundan Rivalry, representing Montenegro in the blue judo game, Max Stewart, representing Great Britain. Man number two in the white judo game, Gan Tukshinaga, representing Mongolia in the blue judo game, Matteo Marconcini, representing Italy. Jan Shinke representing Kazakhstan and he's qualified to bronze medal fight. Dámy a pánové, Nina Totavičí 101 nastoupí k semifinále kategorie mužů na 100 programů v bílém kimonu Lukáš Čepálek, Česká republika a v modrém kimonu Durek Majar, Uzi Majar, Mongolsko. Now, if you want to continue watching the Max Stewart Serdan Merelovic contest on mat three, just click on mat number three and you'll get that. But the hosts want to have a look at Lukas Karpalik of the Czech Republic. He faces Ulzibaya Durenbaya of Mongolia. It's Karpalik in the white Jadogi, Ulzibaya in blue. Well, we saw the contest. Le, le, um, Kapalik and Bohr. Bohr came out a comprehensive winner in that one. Let's see if he can come up with a similar performance this time against the shorter and stockier, heavier built, heavier set Ulzibaya of Mongolia. Another Mongolian on Matt Tuit, actually, Gan Tufshin Jagal. Sport for choice, the, the coach, Batolga. He's got to sit in both chairs looking at both both fights. Sumigaishi attempted there from Kapalik, and now he's got a chance to work on the ground. He couldn't quite turn him onto his side. So no score. Again, he decides to go to, and th that, that'll do. It could possibly have been an Ippon. Yep, it is. Just a little bit away from, from the referee there. You, you can see that he can see one side. He can't see the whole back, and he gives Rosari, but his two colleagues decide to help him out, and it's Ippon for Kapalik. Palik into the final then. Let's go to mat number two quickly. We, we, we will go back down to mat number three, but before we do that, we're going to go to mat number two. And the reason for that, there's another Mongolian on the mat here who is... Um, well worth looking at. That's Gan Tushin Jago. Now, this happens from time to time. That is to say that we start out with a plan and the plan changes. It's always good when they tell you that the plan has changed because then you know what's going on. The plan this morning was to have all of the 81 kilo category contests on mat number three. And I have that plan in front of me. That plan has changed. So we now have some under 81 kilo category contests taking part on mat number two. So you have to keep your eye out and see what's happening if you want to follow a particular fighter. So we had a little bit of time on mat two so that we could split the under 81 kilo category. That allowed us to move contests onto the adjoining mat and we could get the, the competition going quicker. 
and running more smoothly, we wouldn't have had a big break. So that's why we've done that, but I've only just become aware of that. So couldn't tell you about it before. We got it now, though. And Tushin Jago gets caught on the mat edge. Goes tumbling over for Wazari. And it looks as though he's well and truly caught there in Sangaku Gatami. Sangaku Gatami got wrapped up there. Oh, sorry, Jan's headphones are way away from him and he's come back to join us and we were hiding the headphones from him. Well, whilst you were away having, having lunch, we had the pleasure of watching He's gone. He's out. Polish fighter is out. He'll be back shortly. Match number two in our Matteo Marconcini representing Italy. Right, we can go down to map number three then. Three winner, Giovanni Carolo because the the next contest well it can't be Miraljevic already can it right so there'll be a break there well so what we're going to do is go back down to mat number one then we're jumping around a little bit but we've got no choice just in time to see that Tire Toshi, right-sided from Marios Pas Pas Paskevchus of Lithuania. Paskevchus throwing Natia, so it'll be Paskevchus and Kapalik in the final of the plus 100 kilo category. Now, don't be misled into thinking that well he is Kapalik is going to have to fight a plus 100 kilo category fighter, fighter in the final but he didn't always fight at plus 100 he also fought at under 100 he usually fought under 100 well he, he's up there at plus 100 now but he he had previously fought at under 100 kilo category in the uh, in, in the under 100 kilo category Right, well, we've got some repechage contests, I'm sure. Oh no, nine, 90 kilos. Right, so let's watch the, 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 the Polish fighter then. Christoph, Christoph Weglarz. No, we're not going to watch the two Poles battle it out. We'll go to mat number two to watch the contest between... The Andranik Chaparian of Armenia and Choknai Laszlo of Hungary. It will be the quarterfinal. Three minutes and 48 seconds have already gone. And it's Choki who leads by Wazari. Missed with that Sernagi attempt. But use this attack as a combination and finished the action.
tries to go over a right-sided. Takes right away, so that's okay. And then all, almost getting involved in, in the ground. Needs to just move around a little bit. There we go. And Yosai Komi. Chop well, knife. Is Yosai going for Chucky? Yeah. And he's strong. You know, he's got, he's got that big upper body frame, hasn't he? He's, he's not tall for 81. So when he gets that chest... Well, I'm assuming that when he puts his chest on you, you're not you're not moving in a hurry. Strong, powerfully built, 81 kilo fighter. Coming up with the win there. I'll let you have the, the pen because I know you like filling, <laughs> out, yes. filling out sheets. I think they're way behind now, but because <laughs> we've been arranging for a presentation that's going to take place, the governor. Of the Olomots region is coming yes. here. Yes. We're going to get to speak to him in, in, in a few minutes' time. Right, but it, it would appear that every map that we choose, they decide to have a break on. So I'm not sure quite uh, sure how much longer the, the break on map. Number three will it start as the it first. It two more minutes there as well. Another two minutes. Right, well, let's go down to map number one then. Contest there is Murat Gadziev of Russia. He faces Todd Christian of Hungary. No score yet, 3.28 left to go. There you go. Well, Nice and neatly up to date. I'll give you the timing for the break shortly. Uh, have they told us what time we're going to start with the final uh, block? Nice same time as yesterday. There's the Gassif. score. Yeah. Gassif ends the match. He wrapped that up nicely, didn't he? What are you going to call that? <laughs> it was maybe Ukiwaza from the beginning, beginning but the, the end was... Like Makikomi with Maki the arm Komi. wrapped up and him throwing himself, yes. you know. But the beginning he sit down as Ukiwaza yeah, 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 yeah. and then yeah. changing into the Makikomi. Ukiwaza. I don't know. Probably. I don't See, I... I th well, I mean, we, we've spoken about this on, on the program before, about the naming of Waza. So and and it's the intention of Tory. Tory's intention and his action should determine the identification of that Waza. Now this morning we saw I think it was Miraljevic. He attempted some Ashiwaza, yes. missed, caught his opponent up at the knee and, and threw him with what, when we saw the replay again, was quite clearly his Agaruma. It was nothing else than, than his Agaruma. Now, his intention had been to go for the, for the foot, but the movement of, the, uh, of Uke and his own movement turned it into his Agaruma. Now, for me, that's not a, um, somewhere where you would say, oh, he, he attempted Tsurikomiyashi and he ended up with his Agaruma. It's a different movement. You know, the, he, 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 never, he, 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 he never stepped in to draw and pull his opponent. It was always, it was always this movement ra rather than this movement. So for me, that had to be his Agaruma. Although he really aimed to throw him lower doesn't matter. Could have been Ashigaruma that he was attempting and ended up with his Agarumas. But that's possible. But Tsurikomi Ashi and his Agaruma are two different uh, movements. And he never attempted the uh, Tsurikomi Ashi. Anyway, that's all another subject. Let's settle down and watch. Well, let's let Yan 
do the introductions. Yeah, you take <laughs> it over. Okay, thank you. So in white, we see Jaroslav Romir Musil of Czech Republic, and in blue, Sedjan Mrvaljevic of Montenegro. It's the quarterfinal, I think. Yes, it's the qu second quarterfinal in the weight category under 81 kilos. And the uh, Czech crowd is expen expecting a win <laughs> because they are their famous judoka Lukáš Krpalek made it into the final and I think that the crowd would like to have another medal. Well, the, the best way to end the tournament is with your anthem. And th there is every likelihood now that that's going to happen. He's really working on the arm, but he's not going to get it. Mrvaljevic proving a little bit too good in his defense and in any case even if he did turn he had no he had no right leg to trap him and I suspect that Mrvaljevic would have rolled away from that. So, whoop. Oh! Well I don't know about that because there was there is there is no control there for me. Jaromir stepped away with the leg. Yeah. And so they, ju they just go on. I don't know if they're going to show a replay of that one. Because the action is going on now. So we'll just continue with the action. 3.20 odd left to go. <laughs> Almost the counter. A nice little exchange there, three movements all in there. The value of this is the this is the technique. Let's have a look. Oh yes, okay. There was still the sufficient enough from Mavalievich to come up with the Yuko. Good call from the man in the middle who was standing right on top of it and saw saw the handwork from Mavalievich. That's Yuko. And that is Ipon. No doubt about that one. That was the end result. Even Musil knew it. <laughs> no arguments with that. When you go over that big, you really know. That was one, two, three. That was the chance that Musil missed out on there. Musil attacked. Mavalyevic attempted a counter. And then Musil with a... A follow-up just missed out there, but that Ipon was absolutely super from Mervaljevic. Right, coming up next, Diogo Lima of Portugal faces Matteo Marconcini of Italy. It's Lima in the white judogi, Marconcini in blue. So some medal chances for the Czech Republic, but really just as we've seen in years past, or well in recent times anyway, it's down to Kapalik to bring it home for them. Yes, it's up to him. Jaromir yeah. oh, Musil will compete in the repechage. So right, so there's, there's still there's hope for the third place. There's still a shot there. Well, whilst we're waiting, well, they're coming on now anyway, so not going to do any anything fancy I will begin to prepare a rundown of the results from Warsaw and I'll have those after the next the next contest and we're all done and dusted in Warsaw by the way that tournament has finished so here we go with Diego Lima and Matteo Marconcini. Oh. Swift start.
Marco Cini pulling his leg out. And a little bit more. And now I don't think it's Shimevaza, but he got it. He got the head out of the Shimevaza, so the Nevaz action ended. Over a few contests left in the under 81 kilo category. It's going to be a while yet. It's 20 off to 2 here. Yeah, in the 81, there are four, four more fights. Well, we've two semi finals and two repassages. Yeah, we've got the this contest taking place at the moment. Yes. That will leave us with the Repechage contest between Bach and Musil. Chaparian and the loser of this one. And they are two semi finals, so we've got a little bit of work left to do. Not a good attack when he had the head down. Cannot do the Tomoinagi. Again, Lima trying to pull the leg out from the Nevaza to get the Osekomi. And again, not successful. We will get plenty of time because the final block will start at 4 o'clock p.m. Okay, thanks very much. 4 p.m. for the final block. Although the final block will be starting at 4, at 4 o'clock. We're going to have some presentations and awards and various bits and pieces beginning at 3.30. So if you'd like to tune in and hear about things that the EJU are doing then you can you can do that so we're done with the judo on mat number three let's see if we can train that camera over there we'll put that to good use as well then we'll have a couple of cameras Cameraman just having a little bit of difficulties to hold both of the competitors in a screen. Oh, nice. Oh. Not going anywhere, is it? 
Oh, Got the leg trapped. Oh, there should have been a matter a long time ago. Well, he's, he's, he wants to give them sufficient enough time. I mean, it really it isn't going anywhere. Okay. Ooh. Just, Just to have to yeah. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would have been completely dumped there. 33 seconds left. Marconcini really beginning to put the pressure on now. There he goes again. He's done well because he, he, he was the one leading and it really should have been down to Lima. So he's pushing hard for for a win. But couldn't quite manage it. Right at the end. Ran out. So Mate just made the initial turn and then quickly into the Ojigari, but he never really threatened him with that. So no real chance of get of getting caught there. Sorry, Diogo Lima had a bruising contest just before this. I wonder if he's even recovered. He looked pretty tired when he came out here. Yeah, and I don't know if you remember seeing that contest with the Portuguese. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't so long ago. It was with Marco Cini, you mean the quarterfinal. Yeah. The tough quarterfinal for... Very, for very Lima. tough, very tough. Well, as you look at the mat, Lima seems that he has recovered very well. Now leading on Yuko. Still three minutes left of the match. A little bit too much time as far as the Portuguese he is concerned. He'd like to look at that clock and see zero on it now. <laughs> Chaparian saw that one coming, didn't Caparian trying the same attack, trying to close to get close enough and to do the bear hug position. You missed one earlier on. It was I can't remember who it was that was attempting to bear hug the Mongolian. <laughs> the Mongolian just counted him. Gan Tufshinjagl it was that, that did the throwing. It's, it's just the kind of technique that you don't want to em employ to employ against the Mongolian. The last thing. 
I don't want to get too close to the Mongolians with the bear hug going on. Well, we knew that this was going to take a while because it was the, the biggest category of the day. We've already had the first of the repechage contest. Not quite sure why the result hasn't gone in there yet, but they normally update automatically, but Boach through Musil for Ippon. Oh, and oh. another one goes down. Yuko's a good score, I think. Yeah. 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 Second score to Lima, I think that's right. Two fights to come immediately after this. The two semi-finals in the under 81 kilo category and then we'll take that break that we were talking about. Two scores is going to be enough for the Portuguese here. Diogo Lima and now the Osaikomi just to rub salt into the wounds and Chaparian taps out knowing that it's all over. Almost collapses onto his back there. Right, a win for the Portuguese Diogo Lima. He makes it into the bronze medal contest. We've got two more contests coming up for you. The first of the semi-finals in the under 81 kilo category. Giovanni Carolo of Italy will face Serdan Mavaljevic of Montene winner, Montenegro. Diogo Lima representing Portugal and will fight for the bronze medal. So here comes the first semi-final in white key we will see Giovanni Carollo of Italy in blue is prepared Serdian Mravaljevic of Montenegro There's Mavaljevic.
And here comes the Vasari for Carlo Giovanni of Italy. Bermanovic standing in his position. Again, missing out with that Makikomi again, just below the elbow, so didn't come up with the score. Valjevic picks up a penalty for passivity. Needs to change the direction, to be honest. And there's a counter. Yes, good counter. Good score. So, was a real piece. Yeah. Tidies things up. And they may show it again. I don't know. But A little over three minutes left to go. Mavaljevic with a, a neat counter. Tying things up. Was there a piece now? Down Not again. Yuko this time. You see, <laughs> Carolo was thrown for Wazari 20 seconds ago doing the same thing why would you stay there he, he, he brings him down for wasari on this occasion here's the replay for, for, for the wasari could have been it he put him on his back you know he didn't have the, the the right kind of control then with a force speed so a couple of things that were missing he does the same thing o o over there and he stays in there he's just been caught for wasari why would he stay there Twice now caught with the same technique. He's going to go back to that. Once Mavaljevic sets up and stretches him out, he should try to break that grip up. Yeah, he just he can't cope with it. The, the coach knows. Problems again, good effort from Mavaljevic, just threatening Corolla momentarily. Italian then defending, wants to get rid of that right leg around his head. <laughs> Minute 59, the Montenegrin leads. Mavaljevic, two scores on the board, Yuko under Wazari. Carolo having scored Wazari. Koji Gaki from the Italian, Carolo. But Pavalevic stands up nice and strong and defends against it. And then slightly speculatively, Pavalevic attempting that sit down technique, but not really going anywhere, was it, Jan? No, it, it was too far to be, yeah. to be effective. Minute and a half left to go. Valjevic causing some problems as far as the gripping is concerned for Carolo. And he again. over he goes again. Three for three. <laughs> you know, if you, if you don't learn the first time, <laughs> three times he threw him with the same counter. So Mervalevic is the first finalist in the weight category under 81. Yeah. D disappointing from Giovanni Carolo there. The first time he got caught, he must have known Mervalevic. When I'm going over on that side, he's 
he's too, it's not that he's too strong, he's too clever. I'm, I'm, I'm not threatening him with, with this throw. He's happy here. That was, the, that was the Wazari score. And now we know why he went for it. He'd thrown him for Wazari and he thought, right, I'm going to go for that all day now. And every time he went for it after that, he got thrown. He catches him once. And then the next time round, <laughs> he, he was caught. He gets done. And again and again and again. He, got, he caught him three times, having caught him the once. You know, well, if, if you can catch me once and I can catch you three times, I'll give you the one every time, as long as it's not Ippon. There you go. That did for him. Right, here we go. It's the second semi final in the under 81 kilo category. Chokno Laszlo of Hungary faces Matteo Marconcini of Italy. This had the potential for being an all-Italian final. It's perfectly possible that the Italians could come out of this without even getting a medal. It's possible. It's possible. Because they could lose this, this match. The two bronze medal matches they could lose. And then they would <laughs> they could, you, you move from the possibility of an all-Italian final oh. to no medal. That is possible. That is possible. And the Italians had two men in the best four. Yeah. yeah. Well, Carolo lost out to Mevaljevic and Chokna is going to do his best to see off Marconcini. And Marconcini's a good little fighter. But he picks up a penalty for a drop. from Chucky. Chucky, but Marconcini is up to defending it and blocks that one without too much difficulty. 340-odd left to go. Here comes Chucky on the left side with a rather untidy Nippon Sanagi event. He just had hold of the, the sleeve and only the lower part of the left sleeve. It never really looked as though it could turn into something threatening. That looked a bit better. Still, he's, he's insisting on, on swinging in there and just hanging on to, that, to the forearm, isn't he, Jan? He hasn't yes. really got... He's not underneath there. He's not under... Yes, he is, but this, the second time he did it, he loaded his opponent to yeah. his back, but didn't have enough power in the grip to roll him over and, and to end the throw. A little over three minutes left to go. Both fighters moving over to that left side of the competition area as we look at it and now backed up into the near left corner. I'll give Marconcini the Shido there. Yeah, and they do. Yeah. He doesn't even worry about it, Marconcini. He knew. The fighters are really beginning to understand this rule very, very quickly. He knew that he'd stepped out and stayed out. Picked up that Shido. Nothing, nothing wrong with that particular exchange. Two and a half minutes left to go. Nice long time on the clock. Only half the contest gone. Chucky backing himself up now. And there's... Uh, he, s he feels it coming. He's got the left foot bent and covering the arm over which, or the shoulder over which Jockey wanted to take him, so he was never going to go anywhere. Ojigari attempted there from Matthew. And then the Sumigeshi coming back the other way. Got the, the leg trap there at the moment. In the top half. Osai Komi. Oh, he's had to tap out. I think he's pleased with that win. Chelknai <laughs> 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 Laszlo of Hungary defeats Matteo Marconcini of Italy. There you go. 
So we're going to take a break now. The medal matches will be at 4 o'clock. It's exactly 3 o'clock here in Prague. So come back and join us at 4 o'clock when we bring you all the live action from the European Open for Men in Prague. Bye-bye for now. Goodbye.
if you like. Well, a very good afternoon and welcome back to the final block, all the medal matches here uh, in Prague. And I'm joined by Jan Bartel. Jan, how's it been for you? Hello. It's been a very nice day today. We have seen quality matches. I think it was quite successful for the Czech Republic because we will see the final of the heavyweight category where is Lukáš Kapalek and I'm looking forward for the matches. He's had some terrific uh, matches today considering that he's fighting out of his weight category in particular the contest with uh, Borbana the Hungarian who's, who's a quality heavyweight isn't he? Yes he is definitely but we have seen the quality of Lukáš who let's to say defeated Marra in all the categories Tachivaza, Nevaza, Kumikata the movement and the activity. It was a very nice match. We, we say in English, he had his number. <laughs> <laughs> Today he had his number. Right, we're going to watch the contest on mat number two between Lucas Boach of Poland and Matteo Marconcini of Italy. It's the first of the bronze medal matches in the under 81 kilo category. Four weight categories to bring you 81, under 90, under 100, and the plus 100, the blue ribbon event for the day, if you like it, when Lukas Kapalik of Czech Republic takes the mat. Let's sit back and enjoy all the action. That's Marconcini that we're, we're looking at now. Boach is on the left-hand side of your screen. There he is. And we're ready to get underway with the first of the medal matches. There are two bronze medal matches that are taking place. The second is on mat number three, and that's Diogo Lima of Portugal. He faces Giovanni Carolo of Italy. If you wanted to see that one, just click on mat number three. But we're going to follow the contest on mat number two. Lucas Bois and Matteo Marconcini. Where's your money on this one? Oh, I will Jan put the money on uh, Lucas Blach. Okay. And we, we are now watching the Italians. Both of them were in the semi final, and both of them lost the semi final. So, how many bronze medals do you think that Italy will have? Oh, at least one. <laughs> because yeah, on number three, it's done. At least one. Because Carola has just put the Shimiwaza on Diogo Lima. And I think Lima was cramping up. But that was on the uh, that was on the other mat. Anyway. First minute gone, no score between Boach and Marconcini. Quiet start from the pole. And all of a sudden he explodes into Sionagi effort there. Going low down, left sided. And again the clinch in the Kumikata. Strong left arm around the uh, the arm of Marconcini. Forcing him inside and kind of closing him up. You know, it just feels that little bit tight when your arms are being pu pulled in. Yes, and like it's a that. situation for Lukas to, to make the 
combination to and fro. He does it, and you can see he's preparing it to go before, oh, in front of, and Ooh. this one. <laughs> in this time, Marconcini did it. Oh. Won't be a score there. They'd already gone to the ground, and then Marconcini turned Bach over. No score. And Marconcini now losing in the, in the Kumikata. Ah, my apology. Blah losing, not Marconcini. Marconcini okay. is on the top. Yeah. A little over two and a half minutes left to go. Bach just trying to get his head up. He's finding it difficult because his jacket's been pulled over the his head. He just wants to get his head up. You'll be all right. There won't be any penalty for that. And you can see Bach trying to stop that from happening again by really attempting to tuck the gi in. You know, most of the time you, 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 you're quite happy for the gi to come out. Um, it's harder for your opponent to throw the, the loose gi, but he's having a, a problem with it being pulled up and over his head, and he, that was the first thing in his mind. Make sure that the gi's tucked in. He's pulling it down again. He's, he's mindful of that, and that's probably because of the grip that Marconcini's taking. Marconcini wants to go up there at the top there, and he's always pulling the jacket up, up. and up, and if it's, if it's not in the belt, it comes up over your head. So... I, I suspect that that's exactly what I suspect that that's what Boach is trying he, he's trying to stop minute and a half left to go no score, just a single Shido against Boach balanced contest here could be the one score is going to do it Jan no I don't think so I think that there will be some other penalty or some throw in the last minute onto his front so no score well, avoiding getting caught with that Sutemi Waza well, still looks strong though still looks as though he's got enough well, picks up a second penalty. Not unusual for Buff to pick up the passivity penalty. He, he takes his time about his his techniques. But when they come, they're pretty big. He's going to try and avoid that one. He won't want to get wasted on the ground here. He'd like to well stand up if he could. I think that it was a little bit tactical from Marconcini because when you are doing you are saving a lot of time. Well that's what um, the Italian was happy to do get there take up the as much time as possible and there he goes again it's beginning to be a little bit frustrating for Boach now because there's only 30 odd seconds left it was 50 odd seconds when we had that first when, when he got the penalty yes, it was and he hasn't put in an attack since then I think every time he Gets the grip over the head. Marconcini or or goes the top. Marco yeah. Marconcini goes in and down and he has nowhere to attack. He's got to go now, though. He was stepping off that attack, so he won't get called for stepping out of the air. But there are only 19 seconds left to go now. Why can't get the left hip across where he'd like to? There's still a chance. And there won't be enough time for Blach, I think. That's it now. He gets called for dropping. Last chance now for Blach. Oh, oh yes, it is. Oh, Yuko is going to give. Yes, he will give the Yuko, but we'll see. We'll have a look. We'll have a look. I, ca I can't tell him to get up and get onto the mat. We'll have a look. Let's have a look and see what happens here. Mm. That, that's not it. That was, that, that was the false attack. So that was the false attack. 
And now it comes. Oh yes, then on the s on the on, on the other side when he was rolling off it. He doesn't like it, but he takes it. Lucas Bach retakes the win. Bronze medal for Lucas Bach. It's, it's not a question of who you want to win or who should have won or whatever. It's purely a question of does he score Yuko here? That, that's the question. Of course, the, the thing that is also important is what is Yuko? What constitutes Yuko? How do you score Yuko? It's not just because Lukas Bach was attacking and... Where, where is the Yuko? This is what you would look at. Where is the Yuko score? Where, where does he give up? He, d he doesn't want this part of the body. That, that, that's the shoulder, uh, fr from the top of the shoulder down to the elbow and arm, and down the side, and then the, the, and then the thigh. He doesn't want any of that touching the mat. That, that would give up the Yuko. He doesn't want any of that touching the mat. And is there a part where that touches T t touches the mat. As the there is at the, at the end of the action. Exactly. He, he rolled at over. Yeah, as a result, and he rolled over as a result of Lucas Black. He wasn't rolling off the technique. He wasn't trying to avoid it. He couldn't. He, he couldn't do anything else except get get caught. Right. We come now to the. Sorry. We come now to the final of the under 81 kilo category, Serdan, Serdan Mavaljevic of Montenegro faces Chocnai Laszlo of Hungary. It's Mavaljevic in the white judogi and Chocnai in blue. Well, kept going right to the end there. Kept pressing and pressing and eventually came up with the uh, with a score Roughly in the middle he's from Germany just telling the Hungarian coach not to coach during the contest wait for the mate The referee gave a shido there, but it was to Chocnai for stepping out of the competition area. A bit nervous, aren't they? Both the fighters. They are, but. Marivalevic seems to me the whole day that he's standing his position and he's working on it. And he, he's not afraid at all that he won't throw. He's confident that he has five minutes. <coughs> and it seems that he waits until the moment when he's able to attack and to throw for, for his technique. <coughs> he shows a nice, as he was as well, Marivalevic. Hungarian coach told a second time to coach only when the mate has been called. He's going to get called again. Chocolate's going to get called again. He's the reason why they're outside the area. Yeah, he gets called for a passivity. Either one would have done. It's not what you do when you are off the area. He, th he thought, oh, let me put in an attack when he was standing off the area, and then he'd be all right. No, you were off the area. <laughs> that's, the, that's the first thing. What you do when you get there is another matter. He got there without any attack. He then attacked because he was out of the area, thinking, oh, that, that will stop him from picking up a penalty. Well, that's not the case. Missed with the Tomoe mm. Nagi. Mm. 
This time it's Mavaljevic who gets called for passivity. Yeah. That could could have been the case. A little over two minutes left to go. Mavaljevic with a slightly better grip at the moment. Everyone who looks as though he can work something from here. And he's looking on Chucky. But Chucky was waiting for him, that was the thing. He, he didn't want to go across there left-sided, did he? He comes back with a little ashy was there. Just a foot tap, nothing more than that. Powerfully built, stocky Hungarian, Chokno Laszlo. A bit of movement as they go over to the right side now, far corner. They've been stuck over on the left side earlier on, but Chucky doesn't like it over there because he's been penalised twice. Every time he goes over there, he gets penalised. So he decided to change tack now and fight on this side. Minute and a half left to go. And now it's the Montenegrin coach who gets called. Being told to just coach when it's the right time. It was a first dangerous attack from Chucky this time. And again, just holding the end of the sleeve by both hands. Trying to afford Soinage. Oh. Waza. Momentarily in danger at the end of that of being caught on the ground, but Chucky wasn't able to take advantage of it. Navalyevic was just for a second on his back and then spun out of it. But a strong so Temi was an effort, blocked that Seonagi effort from Choknai. Seonagi, Kochi. But yeah, the Kochi was the most yeah, dangerous yeah, part yeah. Of, of the That's right, action. yeah. And still it was, it was an afterthought. He hadn't really thought about the combination at the beginning, but it was there and then he, he stuck it in. Oh, that was a good effort from Mavaljevic. He gave a full-blown effort there. 20-odd seconds left to go. Missed again. Oh! Not quite. Koji Gaki just had Mavaljevic breathing heavily for a moment. And again, another good effort from Mivaljevic, but he won't get caught now. That'll be it. Last few seconds. Mivaljevic cleverly avoiding taking a grip there. So, Mivaljevic it is who takes the gold medal here. We'll have the 90 kilo category coming up immediately after this. Right, coming up next, uh, we're going to go to mat number three, by the way. The contest that we're going to see on mat number three is Komron Show Ustopirion of Tajikistan, and he faces Todd Christian of Hungary. 
here is Jan Martel. And top Christian <coughs> Limbing. I hope that this slight injury won't affect the match for the bronze medal. Both of them making an effort for a sturdy grip, but <coughs> they weren't able to get to this position. One minute passed. And no score on man number three. And again, the Kumikata fight for a good grip this time. Thought got close to a dangerous, to a dangerous action. And as you can maybe hear the audience, Milan Rander has thrown nice was around my number two. And still no score on my number three. Already in a half of the match. Christian struggling to get into the Sainaga position. I'm not able to not able to get the position when the Sainaga can be performed. Both fighters have picked up penalties. There's a little less than two minutes left to go. Mr. Pirion, by the way, is a nice looking fighter. I don't, I don't mean that just as a nice looking guy. I mean that his judo is nice to watch. He's got a specific a style. He's a powerfully built uh, fighter. And very strong, but he moves nicely for his his body type. He's got some good good movement and some good was. He he wants to know what it is that he did wrong there. He's at a loss to to think what it was that he could have been penalised for. There he goes. Needs to go now. Ah. Just managing to get off that. That was good work from top, to be honest. And it's tiny little things that you see sometimes in competitions with the fighters where they acknowledge that there was a bump or a clash and everything, and they sort, sort it out themselves. You just tapped him on the back and he tapped him on the head, and they went on with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, they, they both realized it was accidental.
almost a chance to pick up and now Tot comes back with a couple of low efforts in Sionagi but never really threatened with that and he lost contact with his left hand there Two penalties picked up by the Tajik fighter, Mr. Pirion. That's going to cause him some trouble, I'm afraid, because he hasn't been able to score, and now Tot has Yuko on the board for the Hungarian, and that will be the thing. That will be the difference between the pair. Here is the, there's the score. Mr. Pirion not able to come up with a score. Todd Christian, however, puts a Yuko on the board and takes the contest. And the bronze medal. The other bronze medal was won. No, not yet. Yeah. They cancelled the second was already. Oh, I thought they'd um, put the score on there. Um, Looking at the corner of my eye, I thought. Yes, they, they did. Done that, yeah. And it was cancelled. Okay, so, so there are three seconds left in that one. We won't go over there because there's, there's insufficient time. We'll just watch the end of the Mr. Pirion and the Tot Christian contest, obviously. Just saluting his opponent there. Uh, so that we can watch the rest of the fight on man number two. There's no fight no, number two is done. <laughs> Oh, golden no, score, golden of course, because it was, uh, they both had Rosario. I thought there was a, a Yuko on there, right? Let's go over to mat number two then. You're right, there was a Yuko, but it was they, they took <laughs> that off as well. Right. <laughs> right, yeah, and tell us who we've got on mat number two then. Oh, we've got Milan, Milan Randall in blue. I would start with the Slovakian competitor. Yeah, done now. And done now. And he has beaten Czechomsky Patrick in Poland. He's going to feel hard done by, isn't he? Tchaikovsky is going to feel hard done. Mm. Because there was a time when he'd won the contest. <laughs> I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we're going to have an awarding ceremony now. After we've done the 90 no, kilo category. The final match. Oh, we've got the final. Uh, yeah, I do beg your pardon. It's uh, the, the final of the under 90 kilo category. We've got that to come. And then we'll have the awarding ceremony for the men's under 81 kilo category. Actually, they're all going to be men today, aren't they? So. Right, yeah, and who have we got in the under 90 kilo category final? And I will have a look. It will be Murat Kasiev of Russia in Vajidugi and against him, Alexander Kukoli of Serbia. So, Kasiev in the white judogi. Kukol in blue. Looking forward to this one because I like uh, Gadziev. He's a good boy. And as you look at the contest sheet, Gadziev is the man seated number one in the weight category under 90. And Gadziev. Kukol was man number two. Oh, there you go. At last, the quality has come through. We've had, a, we've had a few number ones who've blown out, haven't we? Mm -hmm. First yeah. round knockouts and all sorts of stuff. So just as well that we've managed to get the number one seed, Gadziev, against the number two s seed, Kukov. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> 
It's, it's, it's not Wazari. I mean, I can hear mm. people calling out Wazari and chatting. Ipon. It's, it's not. He just about squeezed out a Yuko here, to be honest. He just about got Yuko. And the referee, Vladimir Nitko, was right on top of that. He could see what that was. He gave. And there you go. He squeezed out Yuko, and they've said, no, it's not. He just about squeezed it out. And then they've decided no. I thought he was lucky to get Yuko. Well, he may, he may not get another chance. Because Gadjiev dodged that bullet. misses with the Uchimata. I think he's going to have to be careful with that. Gajiev is another one of those fighters who can turn you off the Uchimata. Almost half past four here. Probably be wrapped up by half past five. Still got the under 100 and plus 100 to come. Maybe not that long then. A little over three minutes left to go. No score yet. Gadziev and Kukov looking like a nice, nice prospect here. Great oh, right-sided really. effort. Uh, no score. Well, I can't see it from the other side. I'm not sure if, if there is a replay, we'll see what, what it looks like. That's not where it was. This was, this was see, th and that was a good call. Good call, no score. No score. We were talking about, that, that you know, the scoring part of the body didn't get on there, whereas at least in, in the one that we've seen previously, it did. There he goes again. And this That's time better, yeah. He's had to tap out. And it's Can you believe it? It's the end. He's never on the scoring side of his body for th for that throw. But there. And see, th the best person to, to tell whether that is Ippon or Wazari is the referee because he's the one who's on that side and can see his back. And that's why he gives Wazari. We've got the awarding ceremony for the man's under 81 kilo category coming up. Stay with us. We'll bring you more live action from the European Open here in Prague.
the Czech Euro Federation proudly announces that today the Memorandum of Cooperation was signed between the European Union and the Olmos region for the development of the dual lessons at school program. The principal target of the Judo for school project is that in two years' time, Judo could be officially recognized as a part of the school curriculum and an integral part of the physical education program in European schools. Mr. Smolik, the Vice President of the Czech Judo Federation, would like to say a few words. Dámy a pánové, chtěl bych poděkovat jménem Českého svazu Juda Olomouckému kraji a panu hejtmanu Zvozilovi za to, že se připojili k tomuto projektu. My věříme, že tento projekt bude úspěšný a brzy ho budou nás sledovat i další kraje. A dovolte mi, abych panu Zvozilovi předal ocenění Českého svazu Juda. I would like uh, to invite Mr. Jiří Rokovil, the governor of the Yulmouz region, to say a few words. Dámy a pánové, já bych uh, požádal pana Jiří Rokovila, uh, hitmana Olomouckého kraje, aby řekl pár slov. Dobrý den, dámy a pánové, jdeme ve mně. Uh, já jsem velice potěšen, že pilotní projekt tohoto uh, více než potřebného projektu uh, proběhne právě v Olomouckém kraji. Olomoucký kraj by nakládá velké finanční právě na mládež a všichni víme, že mládež tloustne, mládež se dívá často na televizi, na počítače, na chytré telefony, takže pro mě osobně je tento projekt více než žádoucí a jsme potěšení, že můžeme začít právě v Olomouci. A já moc děkuji za ocenění, ještě jsme nezačali a už jsem ocenil, takže moc děkuji. Now I would like to invite Mr. Sergei Solovejčík, President of the European Union, to say a few words. Thank you. Dear Judo friends, I'd like to thank Mr. Governor of the Olomouc region and his team for their strong decision to join the European Judo Union program Judo to School. We believe that the Judo value must be distributed all over countries of Europe and in some short period we believe that Judah will be in the school curriculum in each school of European countries and we are happy that uh, almost the region is the pioneer of this program in Czech Republic. So I'd like to give special medals to the governor of almost the region and to the Czech Judah Union. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to give you a minute. I'm going to give you a minute.
předání vedení vítězům v kategorii mužů do 81 programu. medalists in the under 81 kilo category right now we've got two contests taking place now two bronze medal matches Grigory Minashkin of Estonia faces Yevgenis Borodavko of Latvia that's on mat three but we're gonna see the contest on mat number two and that's Aldikan Kozbaev Kozbaev of Kazakhstan and Chingis Mamedov of Kyrgyzstan. These are two, these are two quality fighters here. Kozbaev and Mamedov. We should get some excitement out of this pair. Well, that's if Mamedov turns up. But I can't, I can't see him anywhere. So let's go down to mat number three then, because obviously Mamedov has decided that he doesn't fancy it against Kozibayev for whatever reason. And we'll watch the contest between Grigory Minashkin of Estonia and Yevgenis Borodavko of Latvia. It's Minashkin in the white judogi, Borodavko in blue, and the man in the middle from Austria is Ali Gemeinerle. 
tells you everything that you need to know about <laughs> who's on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all action now. How old do you think Minashkin is? I don't know. I, w I would say 33. 33. Have a look. Well, I'll give you a look. Well, how much would you say? I know, I know how old he is. <laughs> uh, that's, wha that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> Maybe he just looks old. <laughs> Right, you said 33? Um, he's 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's 23. I'm, I'm going to tell Minashkin. I'm, I'm going to tell him what you said. When, we, when, <laughs> when he comes off the mat, win or lose, he'll be up here to sort you out. <laughs> you <watch. laughs> no problem. My apology to... <laughs> yeah, get that one in My quick. My apology yeah, to get Grigory. <laughs> get <that laughs> Under 100 kilos, 100 kilos of tough Estonian coming at you. He's a hard guy, Menashkin, and I really like his judo. I really do. And who was talking about the, the, the fact that you fight your neighbor? You know, somebody was talking about that yesterday. You fight this one or you fight that one. And how, how funny it is that you get to fight. It's okay, you can say. Yeah, and and you fight your neighbour. Yeah, that's right. Estonia and Latvia. Yeah. Same yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, but now they are fighting for a bronze medal. <laughs> same, same, countries. same countries. Yeah, absolutely. Same same countries. No score yet. Two forty odd. There goes, there goes Menashkin with his little sit down. Yoko Toshi maybe, but. It's it's a modified actually it's not it's a modified version of Katagaruma. If you look if you look at it, the only thing that he's missing is the right hand on on the leg. You know he he could but he goes over here now. You're right. But the leg is missing because you would get Hansukum <laughs> 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 for <laughs> the leg. <laughs> yeah, he's decided to leave that out. <laughs> Borodavko looks as though he's in the same age bracket, doesn't he? Twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a hard life. Oh, big Osoto, and almost countered uh, by Menashkin. So he's piling up that collar around Menashkin's neck, making it uncomfortable for him. A little bit of a foot sweep, but nothing to write home about. Both fighters have been penalized once. I dare say someone's going to get another one now. It's Menashkin. He's penalized for a negative grip, just forcing down and not making anything happen from it. Push the arm down, make, it, make some kind of reaction, no penalty. But just held down there negatively and he picked up the penalty for that. Minute 20 odd. Fighters seem to have stalled for a moment. Now they're able to come up with a telling attack. And Ashkin looking for an opening for Oji Gari, but there's no way through the strong arms of Borodavko. And then Borodavko looks for that right-sided Seotoshi maybe, but nothing doing there. Let's have a look and see oh, what his opponent is. Well, the other thing to do is to look and see how many times they've fought each other. Menashkin and Borodavko. Well, it would appear that this is the first time that they fought each other. I'm surprised. You? 
Well, Estonia and Latvia. Thought they might have had some previous. Well, the penalty, I think, went on the board there. Third one to Menashkin. He's having a hard time of it, isn't he? Mm, he's he has to do something, uh, but still 22 seconds. And let's see if, if you're terry about the Ippon <laughs> when you're getting three shadows, he's right. Ran out. Just let things get away from him there, Menashkin. He lost out to an older, more experienced man. 27 is Borodavko. That's a good look at uh, Evgenis Borodavko, the bronze medalist in the under 90 kilo. Uh, sorry, under under 100 kilo category. My uh, apologies. Uh, late, late in the day. So. Borodavko over Menashkin and Kozibayev over Mamedov. Mamedov failed to arrive, probably injured himself in the semi-final. Well, we come now to the final of the under 100 kilo category. No Lukas Kopalik. If you are expecting to see Lukas Kopalik in the final of the under 100 kilo category, Czech fighter is not in that final. He is, however, in the final of the plus 100, so we are going to get to see him. But not where we thought we would. The man to look out for here, Toma Nikiforov of Belgium. And he faces Sejanis Mishkolz of Hungary. Final of the under 100 kilo category. When the under 100 kilo category was drawn up, where did we have Nikki Forov as far as any ranking was concerned? Has he, has he got some points there, Nikki Forov? Oh, I will find out. No, he was, he, was, he was, no, no, yes, he was seeded as a man number seven. Seeded number seven. And oh, strong, he goes over, yep, Wazari. Super strong fighter, Toma Nikiforov. I had such pleasure watching Nikiforov compete as a junior. He really felt that there was a, a special talent there. In fact, Nikiforov, under 100 kilo category, junior world champion. What about um, Lukas Kapalik, under 100 kilo category, junior world champion? He won it twice so in a row. <laughs> Nicky Forov didn't, though, did he? But uh, I think that Nicky Forov fought in the weight category under 90, isn't it? In junior category. Yeah, I don't think he ever won the junior world championships, though, did he? He did win a bronze medal at the Junior World Championships, but not a gold. I mean, the, the gold medal winners in recent times in the under 100 kilo category, the Junior World Championships, have been Armonteros, the Cuban, Kapalik, twice, mm -hmm. and most recently, Kyle Rays of Canada. Of Canada. You know, th those, those are the boys. Nikki Forov. W was in there. Who did he lose to then when, when, when he won his bronze medal at the Junior World Championship? It was only just no. recently as well. He must have lost to Kyle Rays, the Canadian, along the way, and then came back in the, in the bronze medal match to defeat the Kazakh fighter. Okay. That would have been a nice matchup, wouldn't it? Nikiforov and Reyes. 
and Kapalik has defeated Rose twice. Over uh, he goes again. That is good. Yeah. Move him up the rankings a little bit. Yeah, that um, Kapalik has defeated Rays twice. Now, it was recently, I think, in Düsseldorf or over twice. He, he beat him in Japan. They were in Japan at the um, Tokyo at the Grand Slam. Tokyo, Tokyo Grand Tokyo. Slam, yeah. And then after that as well, he's he's defeated him as well. I think Paris. Paris. Düsseldorf. Paris or Düsseldorf, yeah, Paris or Düsseldorf. This is nice, look. Such a strong fighter. He gets the right elbow down, and that just stops him from going onto his back. That's where he picked up the first score. That's the Yuko. And then we... And that's the Ippon. Or the second Vazari. Yeah, second Vazari. There's the finish. Right, so that's the 100 kilo category done, yeah? Yeah, and we've wrapped that one up. Yes, we are we are done, and there will be the medal awarding ceremony. Where did so where did Lucas Kapalik beat oh. Kyle Ray's? He's beaten him twice. Once was in Tokyo, and the other Paris. one was in Paris. Paris, there you go, Paris, Paris and Tokyo. The medal awarding ceremony in category men and the 90 kilograms. Right, we come now to the awarding ceremony in the under 90 kilo category. Just move my cup out of the way of Sinashevir. He's known for spilling things. Bronze medals go to Milan Randall of Slovakia and Tot Christian of Hungary. Silver medal, Alexander Kukov of Serbia. And the gold medal goes to Murat Gadziev of Russia. There you go, there, you, there are your four medal winners. Now the national anthem of Russia. Right, we've got bronze medal matches in the plus 100 kilo uh, category for you now. On mat number three, Yezhan Zhinkiev of Kazakhstan faces Uliz 
uh, Ulzi Bayer, Duren Bayer of Mongolia. We're going to see the contest on mat number two between Bor Barna of Hungary and Daniel Natia of Romania. It's Bor in the white, Chidogi Natia in blue. Let's see if we can get something out of Bor Barna in this bronze medal match. Maybe he can come back and show us something that was slightly missing in his contest with Lukas Kapalik. No, we will see. He's got a much more heavy opponent. Yeah, he's got the big guy, hasn't he? he has got to be the heaviest man in the competition. Or well, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but I think so. He looks like the biggest one. <laughs> more neighbors fighting. Hungry and... Yeah. 160 kilos. That's a big guy. That is a big guy. Oh. That was hitting a brick wall. <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> going <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Ball looked to turn in and there was just nothing there, was there? There was a nice cashier on mid number on, three. On, on the adjoining mat, yeah. Ulzi Bayer, Duren Bayer throwing Shinkev for Wazari. And Bor having difficulties with his Romanian. And picks up a sheet over there. And he does it again. Ulzi Bayer, Duren Bayer, showing that that Uchimata from Shinkiev was no accident. He catches his opponent, Shinkiev, a second time. But I know that you're going to be annoyed with me because I'm telling you about something that went on on another mat. So sorry about that. We're just updating you on what happened, that's all. But I'm really sorry to say that Ulzi Bayer's Uchimata um, Sukeji could have been the throw of the tournament. <laughs> And Boris trying to get the activity on his side. So there is a Shido for each. And still no another score change on mat number two. Just past the half of the match. And oh, that was Pursuenagi, he didn't turn enough under the Natia of Romania. What size do you think that belt is then? <laughs> it, it will be long. <laughs> <laughs> Extra long. Extra long, I don't know. Three, <laughs> something. Oh, it would be much more free. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about <laughs> three eighty. <laughs> minute, minute forty odd. Both fighters have picked up a sheet of a piece. Nothing yet to send any messages home about in this contest. 
And by that, I mean if you're not 100% used to English sayings, I, I mean that you wouldn't tell anybody about this fight later on in the bar, would you? I mean, it's not one you're going to mention. Yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there's some interesting end, but... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was he talking about? I can't believe that. I can't believe he gave a Yuko for that. The Romanian picks up a passivity penalty. Boar's going to get put call for a false attack there. I, I would have called him for a false attack. Didn't even look good the second time around. <laughs> well, oh. this, is, this has been a true, truly forgettable uh, contest on the part of both fighters. Bo and Natia, right at the end. Natia with nothing left, walking on to that Sionagi right-sided low down from Bo Bana. At least he brings a few of the Hungarian supporters who've travelled here. He brings them to their feet. Here he comes, Marotti Sionagi. Showing that there is some spark in the big hung Hungarian and finishing off well, finishing off very well for Ippon. So here will come the last contest of today. Yeah, don't rush it. It's <laughs> <laughs> time, this time. Let's <laughs> uh, so look at the highlight from here. Well, that wasn't this. This was the Yuko that wasn't. And this was the Ippon that was. Yeah, well, that will do. Right, Jan Bartel, take it away. <laughs> so in white judogi, we will see Lukas Kirpalek, and in blue, Marius Paskevicius of Lithuania. When was the last time that uh, Paskev just fought at under 100, 100 kilos or under? It's a little bit unfortunate. The fighters are on the mat and the referee wants to adjust the mat together. Well, the, the difficulty is, is we, we've had some big guys there, you know, some, some heavyweight guys, and they've been moving those tatami around, so I don't think there's much they can do about it. Yeah, I understand. I understand. But it is, a, it is a bit annoying, it is a isn't it? It just did before they come yeah. to the match. True, true, very true. Right, 34 years old. Let's give Justin, let's have a look and see when he fought last at under 100 kilos. It's a while ago, isn't it? Oh, we are in the year 2009. And it's still over. Yeah. There you go. It was way back in. 2006. 2006, but he'd had a good run at it, hadn't he? 2006 in Minsk, he lost to Dmitry Budelin at under under 100. After that, he was always up at plus 100. 
lost to Teddy Rinner in the semi-final of the World Championships in 2009 in the plus 100 kilo category. And then he won the bronze medal against Daniel Andre Hernandez of Brazil. World bronze medalist. Stiffest test now then for Kapalik. Can't get the left hip across. And decides to take it to the ground. Just wanted to get Still can't get the left hip far enough across. Combination coming, I think. You can see him setting Paskovicius up for that. I think the Paskovicius is too tall for Lukash. And this height makes him the problems. Good pressure. A little bit of a... No. Lost, lost control with the hands and decided to, what we call, bail out of the attack. He decided to let it go. Oh, big pickup! Oh. <laughs> almost. <laughs> he almost had him up there, didn't he? Remember, Yilmaz, the referee in the middle, taking control of this one. He drew the, the good card. Footwork needed from Kapalik. A little bit too far away from him. You need, you need your, your man really on top of you and in close for that for that lift. Oh, oh yes, you'll nice. score there, Yuko. Uh, Yuko's good. People Yuko good. calling for Wazari, but I like it for the Yuko. That old sticky foot. He traps the foot here and then stays with it. And drives him yeah, yeah, yeah. down to the mat. That's right. That's right. Well put, Jan. Sticky foot. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time left. He'd like to turn from here. I'll oh, continue to stay there. And the Sumigaishi as well. And now having to defend. I don't think he's got any trouble on the ground. The pallet. Another left sided effort. Can't get the hips low though, can he? Oh. He's always hitting him a little bit too high up, and Paskev just able to block him out. And he will collect the shido, I think. I, I don't know. I, I, partly the jacket made it yes. look awkward. I, I'm, I'm rather hoping that the referee is going to say, look, you know, the gi was untidy. That was what made you look defensive. So I'm going to leave that one. Let's see what he does. Yeah, he leaves yes, it. He got, he got away with it. It was close, but right, just to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, look, you know, I would have got up, but the jacket was over my head. So a little over two minutes left to go. Ochi Gari, big Gari, effort. Yeah. And good turn, that's it! He turns Pas Paschevkos onto his back. And Lukas Kapalik takes gold for the Czech Republic here in Prague. Well, he does what he did, what the organizers wanted him to do when he entered that weight category, and he takes the, he takes the gold medal. He's going to send everybody home happy because the last thing that they're going to hear in the stadium 
is the playing of the Czech national anthem. Big Oji Gari from Paskev, of course. It was the first time that he'd really attacked. And the situation before the throw was dangerous for him. Yeah, of course, yeah. But Kapalik stayed on top of it. He stayed in nice and strong. And he demonstrated that even at plus 100, he can mix it with some of the good fighters. Not saying some of the best, but definitely some of the good ones. Paskevichus and Bohr were in here. Nevertheless, it's Kapalik who comes out on top. So yeah, a good, a good result for the Czech fighter. Now, before I forget, we've got a little bit of a break now as far as the, the broadcasts are concerned. We'll broadcast again from Tbilisi. We'll broadcast again from Tbilisi in a couple of weeks' time. I think that's the, I think it's three days, 21st, the 21st, Friday, 21st of March. So, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll broadcast the Tbilisi Grand Prix and then again the week after that from Samson in Turkey. Two Grand Slams back to back. Borodavko and Kozibayev picking up bronze medals. Jan, are you going to watch those broadcasts, Paul? <laughs> oh, definitely. I'll, 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 I'll switch you on on Saturday or on Sunday. Usually I look for, for the contestants for Czech Republic and then the final block. Oh, that, there's the gold medalist. From Belgium, Toma Nikiforov. A really good win. I'm happy for him. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up for the national anthem of Belgium. And now the national anthem of Belgium. Right, now before I forget, I just want to uh, thank you for watching the broadcast. I, wanna, I also want to thank uh, Jan Bartel. Jan, thanks very much. You're welcome. I, I would like to thank you. I really enjoyed it. Now, we're going to bring you more judo in a few weeks' time when we bring you the Grand Prix uh, from Tbilisi. That's the 21st of March. We've got one more awarding ceremony um, to, uh, to, to bring you, and then we're going to end with the Czech national anthem. But from all the broadcast team here, Sinisha, and uh, my uh, co-commentator for today, Jan Bartel, bye-bye from Prague. Goodbye from Prague. Thank you.
Please set up on the shaft and on the checker. 